the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. King of my life, you are my all and i live for you alone king of my life you have my all and i lay my life for you king of my life you are my all and i live for you alone king of my life you have my all and i lay my life for you my heart is yours You're the king of my life. Hallelujah. Numbers. Are you in numbers? Strongholds of the mind. Numbers 13. This was the story of the 12 spies. I'll be very brief and then we'll pray. Hallelujah. And the Lord spake unto the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Okay, let's start from 13, 26. And they went and came to Moses and Aaron as the spies now and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran and Kadesh and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land and they told him and said we came unto the land to which thou sentest us and surely it flowed with milk and honey and this is the fruit of it Nevertheless, the people are strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the Negev, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the edge of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it 31 but the men that went up with him said we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we hallelujah bless your word tonight strengthen us in the name of jesus now mindsets i want to talk a little about mindsets right please mindsets mindsets a mindset is a value system an ideology
Hallelujah. My good friend, come and shake me. Forget about the people. Come and give me a big hug. If you like, hug me, sir. I missed you. This way, Jerry. Thank you. I love her. I appreciate her. Many of you, if I say you should come out, how are you? I missed you, Jerry. Give me five. Yes, I go back to the seat. God bless you. A mindset is an ideology. Your value system, your plane of perception. The platform from which you judge and interpret things is called a mindset. There are some scriptures that I read in the Bible that really made me afraid over the years. One of them is, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. How can God equate a man's life with the content in, in his heart? He said, for as a man thinketh in his heart. And then another scripture says, guard your heart. Have you ever come across that scripture? It says, guard your heart with all diligence. Be meticulous about it. He said, for out of it. Hallelujah. New Living Translation says, for with it you will chart the course of your destiny. Guard your heart with all diligence. Hallelujah. It's always an honor for me to talk, not just with different people, but young people, because what god is about to do in the nations is very prophetic and we are his battle acts we are the tools that god will be using to accomplish all that he'll be doing hallelujah but then there is a big mountain that we need to conquer in africa in nigeria in zaria and only god knows where else hallelujah I took out time to study the history of Nigeria and a bit about Africa. I'm not a historian. And I got to find out that as a result of the colonial rule, hallelujah, a spirit and a mindset was put upon the black race. Are you listening to me? And that mindset is a curse. A mindset that teaches men that all about your life is servitude are you listening to me when although nigerians gained their independence they were not free until today we are still not free and if we must rise up listen to me to that prophetic destiny that god has designed for us then we must come out of certain mindsets tonight's message will wrestle a lot of mindsets and kick them out of your life hallelujah i began to find out in my life that a man can never rise above and beyond his mindset i know many of you have heard it but write it you can never rise beyond your mindset your plane of perception did you know the limitation in africa today is not the natural resources in this country or in this continent africa is the richest continent in the whole world hallelujah nigeria is a very prophetic nation yet there's still death corruption poverty mindsets hallelujah and this mindset has eaten into the educational system of this country hallelujah such that when someone writes jam as soon as they give him admission the next thing he's eyeing one position just eyeing one office oh lord let me be a clerk let me be a secretary no productivity no advancement no thinking out of the box we have become managers of the realm that we found ourselves no breaking status quo to do anything hallelujah some of you your parents have told you just follow it don't try to do anything new hallelujah the bible lets us know that 12 spies were sent to go and look at the land of canaan 
And the Bible says they all came back happy. They gave Moses and Aaron the report. They said it was wonderful. I mean, the land is truly flowing with milk and honey. Hallelujah. And then 10 of them says, but nevertheless, in other words, taste the fruit. Delicious, really nice. However, we saw certain kinds of people that are half humans and half something else. Six fingers, six toes. Terrible people. To the extent that our mind interpreted us as grasshoppers before them. Hallelujah. Said the Jebusites, the Hittites, the Anakites dwelt in that land. And while they were speaking, a man called Caleb was just listening. And he allowed them to finish speaking nonsense. And then he says, well, this is my own report. Let us go up at once. In other words, look, we are more than ready. He said we can take these people. Forget about their height. There are two animals that Jesus associates himself with in the Bible. Number one is the lion. Number two is the eagle. And this bird and this animal, they are the king of their kingdoms. Hallelujah. And this is not because, for instance, the lion. The lion is not the strongest. The lion is not the wisest. Hallelujah. The lion is not the biggest. But there is an attitude. There is a mindset. The lion has a resolve and a determination. And he made him to become the king of the jungle. Follow me tonight. The eagle is such a robust creature. Such a robust bird that history tells us that the eagle does not fly. It doesn't flap its wing. It soars. It will rise to a high altitude and stand. And for a long time, try to gauge the current of the wind. Why other birds are just flying and hoping that the wind goes their direction. The eagle will stand. Such powerful vision that from a high mountain top, the eagle can look at a lamb and come with accuracy and precision and pick it up hallelujah strong animal many qualities about these creatures for instance the lion will never eat any meat it did not kill if you give it dead meat no it will kill by itself understands the power of conquest and honor and jesus calls himself the lion of those many animals in Judah is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Hallelujah. And the eagle. To the extent that God loves these creatures that he designed creatures after this likeness and put them before his throne. The lion, the calf, the face of a man and the face of the flying eagle. The first thing I want to let you know is that mindsets are a sum total of number one, your environment. Your environment, right? Your mindset is a sum total of your environment. Number two, your experiences. Your environment cultures your mindset. Those of us outside, are we following? Say amen. Hallelujah. Your environment, your experiences. Number three, your cultural background. Cultural background. Cultural background. Number four, your level of orientation and exposure. Hallelujah. Praise God. These are mind builders. So look up. Every one of us, when we get born again, we come into Christ with heterogeneous mindsets that are a derivative of many factors. Are you listening to me? I've always given this an exam as an example. Someone who grew up in Portacot or worry or Lagos has a different mindset and an ideology from someone who grew up in Zaria. Is that correct? 
In Zaria here, a bus can stop and reverse just because of one person. And can delay and wait. But down south, there's no time for that. You have to find a way of maneuvering yourself to jump out if you're interested in highlighting at that point. Because the people are serious and they are ready to move forward. There are certain mindsets. Hallelujah. In the north, for instance, I mean, you don't need to bow down or bend or do anything. Just maintain some level of courtesy and speak softly and you greet someone and that's okay. But in the south, you, that's not enough. Hallelujah. No matter how tall you are, you must bend down and greet. These are mindsets. Now, and it so happened that a majority of the factors that shape our mindsets did not come from the word of God. Hallelujah. Please follow me. This is very important. And so, as many as our heads are, just imagine that there are no bodies in this auditorium. Plenty heads. A summation of various mindsets. Hallelujah. Various mindsets. You have arrived at certain conclusions about life based on certain things. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When you come into Christ and you get born again, immediately the Holy Ghost begins his work of transformation. And that transformation is not just changing you as it were physically, but he begins to work on your mindset. He begins to scrutinize and edit your mindset thoroughly. And let me tell you something, this does not happen overnight. Are you listening to me? Because you have come to gain security and confidence over certain mindsets. For instance, there are certain people who never believe that they can make it in life on their own. There must be an external help somewhere. I don't mean godly help. You get what I'm saying. They can never. There are students that even if you give them the exam question before the exam, they will still fail. The only thing is that let me copy it and answer it in a sheet and then enter with it. Mindset. That's how they, they, they went from primary one to JS1. During Waek, that was what happened. That's how they wrote jam. It has become a mindset. So when you say you are victorious, you say, of course, with my paper on my hand and my ability to be crafty and cunning, I know I will make it in this life. Hallelujah. There are other people who believe that the way to treat people is an eye for an eye, tooth for tooth. What else for what again? Leg for leg, anything. Do me as I do you. Don't say that other part because it's very ungodly. Hallelujah. And so we have all kinds of we we have guys who come from cultures where a lady cannot talk looking at the guy in the eye correct she will bow down or do whatever now you come into a new environment and you carry your village with you and you're moving everywhere hoping that everyone is that atmosphere mindsets so now you are in a class for instance or you are in koinonia like this and they say give your neighbor a high five and you are wondering there are contemplations in your heart what kind of disrespectful environment is this? Mindset. Let me tell you, as you see people move, they are carrying several things with them. They may be quiet. You may put with one on it. You may bab it only. They are mindsets. Mindsets. There are certain people who have never seen a miracle in their life. Never seen one. And so the day they see anything, I watch the faces of people during miracle service. And I see the shock that happens. When you lift your hands and someone falls by your side, you're just mindsets. Every time the word of God comes, you know what it does? It's like an arrow. And it hits different mindsets. So mindsets say, lie, lie, I don't agree. It begins to challenge your mindset. And it's like a wall. Stronghold. Listen. Demons take advantage of these mindsets and they access certain lives. 
there are many families today who believe that they believe in what I call traditional Christianity. You, you get my point? We love God. We we'll go to church on Sunday. However, we won't go and visit the man, but there are certain things we can take along with us. When the going gets tough, it's the tough that gets going. And so we use that mantle. Where is the God of our herbalist? And you use it to part the Red Sea. And so there are mindsets. Mindsets. There are many fathers today, for instance, the day the wife calls him darling, he looks and says, ah, what is my wife watching? That's supposed to be a lovely compliment. But the man will be offended for maybe months. I say, what kind of disrespect is this? Hallelujah. Or a small child just say, mommy, I need to tell you something. He say, you didn't add my mindset. There are guys who will never greet a lady, for instance, and say, you must be the one to greet me. That's how it is in our village. So, they are carrying it again. Atmosphere. Mindset. Although you are born again, now follow me. You are born again. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. But you carry it with you. And when God wants to step in and do something in your life, those mindsets stand as strongholds. Are you listening to me? And so, God must break those mindsets and they give way. There are some of you who never believe that you can help anybody. There's one very dangerous house statement. Don't ever find yourself confessing that statement. It's a curse on yourself. Hallelujah. There are people who believe, listen to me, there are people who believe that they can never be blessed to be a blessing to others. Hallelujah. There are other people who believe. I'm telling you, maybe some of you are even here. There are some people who believe God can never hear them directly. They say, pray for us. You think they are joking, but they mean it. I want to ask you a question tonight. What mindset did you come here with tonight? Because God is about to work on certain mindsets. Dangerous and terrible mindsets. There are people who believe, for instance, you can get born again, get into a relationship, sleep around. So long as you are going to marry the lady, guaranteed. It's a mindset. So when the word of God is coming about purity and holiness, that mindset says, forget it. Who is not doing it? There are mindsets that believe that if you want honor, be a pastor. Correct? And sadly, there are many ministries. That's what they call spiritual development. So the day you get born again, your ambition, your goal, your plan is to come to a point where you become a pastor. So all the brothers want to be pastors. And if you are not a pastor, you are a failure based on the mindset that has been created. So everybody is moving around. I'm a pastor. I'm this, I'm that. There are certain people, listen, who because of the challenges that they went through, they you drank gari using your hand. Eh? You mix the sugar with your hand and drank it. So that anger is still in you. And you are looking for the people to vent that anger on. So the day they make you a leader, you try to make sure you prove to everybody you are not as naive as before again. Why did you bring fork for me to eat this food? Why did you do this? As if you were not using your hands before. Mindsets. And we are you getting blessed tonight? And we use these things to define our behavior with other people. There are other people who believe that once you are simple with certain people, they disrespect you. So the moment they see anybody, they square up their shoulder. Say, please bring me my blackberry. Say, no, the other one, I mean the bold, bold what? Not the other one. Or let me even use the galaxy tab. I think that one will be faster. What is, who cares? Now, you think the people are being impressed. And someone else with his mindset is being surprised. He's saying, you mean this is the definition of fulfillment in this man's world? Hallelujah. So the guy is coming close to a lady and he's flipping his phone. And in his world, he has people like him. He has found them around. So they have become groups. They are mindsets. 
So who is wearing which watch? Who is wearing this? And that's all his pursuit. That's what drives him. You are sitting at the back, but you believe based on your mindset that everybody is seeing you. Mindset can be terrible. Let me tell you. Mindsets. Hallelujah. There are guys that come with mindsets. They believe. No lady can tell me no. I ask any lady I want at any time. I don't hear no. I am this. I am chief this. I am chief that. Devilish, satanic strongholds of the mind. Are you following me now? There are mindsets. There are certain people who have been taught money doesn't grow on trees. All these tags, they are deceiving you. All these giving you better keep your money. They can have one million naira. You, you have 10,000. If you give them 100 naira, they'll collect and add it. Mindsets. And there are all kinds of books to help and massage that mindset and keep you in it. Hallelujah. Do you realize that every one of us in this place, including myself, have mindsets that have built up themselves as strongholds? Are you listening to me? And except these mindsets are conquered, some of us will never rise beyond our present level. Hallelujah. There are certain people, they go to school, they do everything, but their mindset still takes them. I was listening to one man, he said, he's gone abroad, he did this, but he likes his local dish, it's his best food. I say it's a lie. It's a lie. You went abroad, what did you eat? Where did you go? Abroad is it's like say I studied science. Where did you go? Which restaurant? He said he came back and he found out that all those things are junk. Not everything is junk. Oh. Let me tell you the truth. Just tell us based on your level of financial resources and the exposure that was available at that time. You went to a place that did not create the best of pictures. But don't. Because there are certain people living in a higher realm of life. And you see, the thing about mindsets is this. Listen. There are two factors or forces that can help you get out of mindsets. Number one, the word of God. Or number two, premature exposure. The danger is that if it's not the word of God that begins to reorient your mind, you're going to become a disaster. Because when you suddenly realize, let me give you an example. Someone who always just enters express. Express! Just stop. He carries you to wherever you are going. And then one day someone gives you a lift. You've always known you are fine. It's just that you didn't know the accent. And then someone just stopped you. In his BMW X5. I've been talking about that car. Hallelujah. For me or you? You are a student. You better read your book. You have exams next week. Hallelujah. Now you enter the car. Ah! Suddenly you begin to find out that you mean there is a higher realm of life than what I have known. Hallelujah. You sit down, the seat adjusts itself on you. How? Your mind. Something is happening at that point. When you drop from that car, what happens? It leaves you with a memory. The memory displaces something in your car. Your roommate that used to say hi, you now say, ah, don't things are changing orientation are you listening to me or they now make you a leader whether a leader of your fellowship or something and suddenly for the first time they held your bible you've never known how it feels you've only imagined it ah, and you wanted to behave yourself but later on you couldn't hide it you laughed and you smiled and then everybody wants to leave the old for new if you taste of the new and is better you will dump the old quickly when i was in port Harcourt, there was a preacher the church i attended there fulfilling world ministries and the man of god traveled abroad to uk for the first time they gave him three thousand pounds as honorarium when he came back pastor he said i saw a level of life 
that is better than the way you wicked members in this church have been subject no really and he, in anger he said so i am this valuable and you people have been playing with me you go and see the way other people have you seen people like that say from today from today and called for certain partners that will be sowing into his life every week to the end of that year it was as, and they did something wrong in the church and he left he was going the members had to run and bring him i sat down there and i said you see you see why god doesn't answer some prayers you see why god doesn't answer oh god take me even if it's ghana take me out of this country and god says the way you are if your leg matches the international airport you you will come back you will not hear god again or anybody there are people like that too. they give you five thousand naira home and abroad that's all you have you just have to depend on god and use it well one day you went to your friend's house and the father gave you hundred thousand ah! you did everything you did in your small world and there was still change you didn't even know what to do with it again from that time the day you see your father counting five thousand you are just tapping your hand and say if you won't give me i know how to get it now i'm smart this is what leads people into prostitution they tested something that looked better than the old life but it was not a derivative of the word of god and so there's that craving if i can just sleep with this orgasa and two hundred thousand is my own it's not like it's for us to share my own who will know and they start before you know it they are changing mindsets and so our goal in this place because there are many of you the way you are receiving the word of god your mindsets are saying no it's just your head that is saying yes when you are saying yeah yeah your mind is saying you are joking i'm not giving way i will preserve this mindset there are some of you who will see someone maybe your friend going to go and sleep with one man traveling even during this exam now going to go and collect the money for exam and you say well the way i am you know it's not good to disturb people who told you this this issue of it's not good they used to say this should not be done start scrutinizing the foundation of your mindset where did it come from hallelujah are you listening to me see those mindsets responding in anger i'm seeing all of them the mindsets just coming from east west north middle belt all of them just rising we will crumble them tonight in the name of jesus because the bible says psalm 78 from verse 10 down to 17 and when you read further the bible says that the nation of israel haven't gone through 430 years of captivity the children were born in slavery born in servitude hallelujah the bible says when they went to the wilderness they limited god by saying can god make a way in the wilderness do you know there are some of our parents today who do not ever believe that they can buy a new car i mean brand new i'm not talking of belgium brand new that you are the one who removes the rubber when you say that they just laugh this stupid boy you are still young grow up and you understand what is all that and there are many of us from the time you were earning five thousand now god has helped you you are earning two hundred and fifty thousand to buy a new shirt the day you buy it you will cry because it looks like you lost a baby mindsets you are in the boutique you are just frowning you come back what happened i bought a new shirt this is something that is supposed to be a blessing but that mindset of suffering you are used to it to the extent that when god wants to give you a new opportunity say no god is okay i i need to You go to a restaurant you, you, you someone is paying the bill you're already embarrassing yourself how much is everything what is your business Stay the person took you these are mindsets that disgrace us in public places you are well dressed you kept quiet nobody knew when they say you just say how are you the one paying for it or some of you because you have never been there when you get there you will do crazy things they say okay pick this hey 
say, let me take it now. Because I don't know where. Give me this. Uh, puff puff ice cream. Give me this. This cake. Is it for birthday or just normal days? Bring it. You reveal your mindset when opportunities give room. That's why many people limit themselves. Some people go for a job interview. As soon as you enter, you don't greet anybody. You just go to the seat and sit down. You say, I got first class. They just tell you, get up and walk out of this place. They will never give you that job. Doesn't matter who prayed for you. Bad manners, you just step in and enter and just sit down. And you're looking at everybody. Say, how are you? You say, hi. Hi. You are looking for a job. You think that's how the people got that job? They ask you a question. See, let me tell you. If the, God will help us this night, oh, say amen. amen. You entered the job this in. You saw that it was your uncle. They say, ah, uncle. Yeah. God help you. They are doing an interview for you. Mindsets. Mindsets. See, this is why some people never step into some levels of grace and lifting and power. They never become leaders. They remain servants forever. That's the mindset in Africa. You see Nigerians on CNN or BBC and see what many of them do. Hallelujah. We spend money and pay their flight. They take from the national treasury and you, when it's time for them to speak, Look at the ambassadors of many countries articulating themselves very well. When it gets to the point of Nigerians, they take personal issues that is not the business of the world and start venting. Listen to them on radio everywhere. Mindsets. Preachers, mindsets. They name their sermons after their annoyance. I am coming back this time around for you. What is that? You just know that he's fighting with someone. It's not the oil, but the hand that holds the oil that matters. Let me tell you something. A mindset can limit you. You can never rise above and beyond the level of your mindset. Make sure as you are laughing, you are taking it seriously. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When God began to open my mind about my mindset, I found out that if I don't change my mindset, my life will never change. And I began a radical project to change my mind. Because as innocent and loving as my parents were, some of their mindsets were not consistent with God's word. Are you listening to me? And I knew that I have to change it. There are many of you who are waiting right now for your father or mother to die. You have been eyeing the house. You see people fighting. They are fighting over their grandfather's land. They should be ashamed of themselves. They say when he left it, was this not where he put the mark? From that time till now, you've not been productive to rise up and do everything. You are even gathering your children and say, when you see uncle so, 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 hate him for the rest of your life because that land is our own. What did I say? The children say, it's our own. They stand up with that mindset. They go around to school, say it's our land. You see why I sang that song? What's the song again? I can go back to the way. What is the it? What is the it? The mindset. It used to be terrible. So you are, you are making a vow that I won't go back. I've seen a higher light. I've seen a better life. That you can be prosperous and make heaven. That you can be a millionaire and make heaven. That you can walk in the dignity of kingdom integrity and still be prosperous. That you can shake your generation and bless people. That from that you can write the books that are in your heart. I study a lot about great people.
have a lot of their documentaries. Hallelujah. And I'm touched at how they spoke to themselves. Talk about the man Nelson Mandela. Great man. Had a dream in his heart and he said he was going to change the course of South Africa. And 20 years in prison did not stop him. Right now, even on their currencies, his face that is there. Almost every note. I think every note. Now, many people clap and we use him as a case study. He changed his mindset. Jesus was born in Nazareth. And the Bible says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Jesus said, no. My vision is beyond this place. I refuse to be confined. Do you know that many of you seated here, if you will tap one third of the grace that God has put in your life, your generation will not recover from what you have. But you've been hearing all kinds of voices that have been speaking to you. Every time you look at Oprah Winfrey, you just imagine yourself but now with the perspective of the kingdom and your mindset just punishes you and said you better hibernate i think you need some rest you think people just grow and become tv hosts hallelujah do you know how bad a mindset is a mindset can be so bad to the extent that if someone comments you you can think is the person is intimidating you or the person is insulting you they just say ah you speak very well though. you go back and ask 10 people and say if somebody is angry with you how should the person respond mindsets many of us have had different mindsets when our parents are angry they have names they call us stupid boy say sir so you have grown with that mindset and now every time you want to move forward that thing replace see you can change the future but you cannot change history the mind has a memory bank it keeps records of all the days when you could not do certain things and when god begins to speak to you and say look i can take you to a higher place do you believe it one of the greatest gifts a man can have is self-confidence i don't mean arrogance self-confidence some of you have refused to learn how to drive till today till tomorrow not because a car is not available you believe the day you get on the road you are going to kill somebody and yet you see these these outside boys small boy of nine years ten years you know when they park the car in pz the masters will be resting the boys are so confident they don't ever imagine accident that's how they learn no, no driver's license no nothing confidence many of you lose confidence you have a presentation you you are the best student you have the best work but you are fidgeting come and lead prayer you who prays very well now you are praying and oh father in the name of jesus you find yourself saying things you shouldn't say you didn't even know you have ended the prayer because of pressure all kinds of things but when the holy spirit begins to work on you listen to me the first thing is he exposes the flaw in your mindset. The greatest deceit that can happen to any man in the earth is to believe your mindset is okay the way it is. Every time I interact with God's word, I look at myself. Sometimes I just look at myself at the mirror. I say, Joshua, change for God's sake. And then I slap my head and I laugh back again. But I'm just, these are just efforts to say you need change. I read some of them his book multiply your success lead powerful leadership book there are many of you that what you are seeing here and i and all of these things god is already every time you sit here god is telling you do 10 times more than what you are seeing you say god me when will you stop that mindset of inferiority and complex are you listening to me that mindset of unworthiness and false humility and embrace what god has said about you there are ladies in this place you believe that if you get married it's a miracle in fact the wedding should be called thanksgiving not not wedding solemnization you just have some nasty negative things about yourself so other ladies their hands are soft and tush but our hands the testimony of hard work
mindsets mindsets hallelujah mindsets there are some of us the first day they give you fork and spoon and knife you sit down and be laughing at yourself for a long time it's not like you cannot use it is it excitement or pressure you are just you don't even know what to do say i deserve a good life say it africa this is the gift africa gave us we grew up and met mindsets that will never tell us we can arise never the day you took first you went to your father and said daddy i took first he said eh? what did you work for what did i pay your school fees for give me a chance Jare, as the mechanic come and you are wondering you are saying somebody who took 10th position they caught chicken for the person your neighbor and you took first and they trivialize it and you say okay according to my mindset first is the same as 14th position the next next time you get 20th position and your father says i always knew you say it doesn't make any difference some of us grew up with that mindset and so excellence lives your life permanently you don't value it you don't respect it get up and throw clothes on your on your bed and leave it there say sure i'm going to marry one day mindsets so two couples get married are you let me use somebody come my dear Are you ready to accept this lady as your lovely way? You didn't even listen. You just nodded. Yes. You uncle. Yes. Two of you go to the house. Clash of heterogeneous mindsets. Coming from several places. In our world, my father treats me like a queen. The other guy in their world, I'm the king. Clash of values. When I'm pregnant, will you cook for me? Am I crazy? Will I cook for you? Men don't go to our kitchen in our, in our culture mindsets you see why it's good to stay with the word of god he said do not be conformed to this age but be what transform what does a transformer do say it what does a transformer do changes things god bless you my dear mindsets because the way many of us are going our mindset will lead to a fatal accident in life you are praying in tongues you are moving but your mindset is taking you back your mindset is taking to the extent do you know that well you can ask Jake's and bishop by god's grace we have prayed for thousands of people in tongues and have found out that 90 percent of people who have challenges receiving the baptism of the holy spirit at that spot are people who were challenged with their mindsets when they begin to speak they turn aside and they are looking they feel like I'm such a villager. I cannot even articulate myself. Now you are saying I should be filled with the Holy Spirit. Did I really receive it? Or the one I received came from somewhere? They say, turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor you have a great destiny. Immediately you turn, you just see your village. You don't see another neighbor. And you remember. What about the farm? What about the tractor there? What about this? And God is telling you, you will rise from that level. Some of us, where we come from, maybe it's even a hut that you are staying, a real hut. So what? Say after me, so what? So you get angry. Your dad is a carpenter. You just see one guy pass, you say, that's my, my father's younger brother. All these people, they tell them, work hard, they will work hard. Have you seen people like that? Denying their father and mother. Their mother sells akara and they come they say who is that they say, well, they, say, they say mommy mommy they mention one name they say it's just the name we call her that's the express revelation of complex you need a retreat quick quick whatever you are doing stop and go for a retreat we are not proud of ourselves see this is what makes a lot of guys they come to meet a lady and they come and they are telling her stories say to sin um my father just dropped one G. Who asked you? Who asked you? See, and the other day, self, I was even wondering, hey, you care for anything? He doesn't have money. Pressure. Pressure. He begged for someone's phone and told the guy to call him when he's with this lady. See, I deliver you from that mindset in this place in Jesus' name. 
there are many ladies who cannot go and see their boyfriend or whatever they say please give me this phone please give me your shoe please work with what you have covetousness a product of mindset you can't see anything good and leave it quietly hallelujah mindsets do not be conformed to this age there are many of us who have adopted wrong mindsets of success right now you're already imagining if i become like pastor jakes my own zue rao not sit at the back she'll be standing holding the water when i want to drink i'll just shift my mouth like this and she'll put that's your mindset and as crazy as what i'm saying is there are people today who are doing it they do it with honor and dignity there are pastors today that if their members see them anywhere, they will kneel down and have to greet them. And then he stands. You are embarrassing yourself because that's a mind. By the time you rise to a higher level, you see. You want to write a book. You say you want it to be a bestseller. You go and meet somebody in community market and say, can you produce this book for me? Is it going to be a bestseller that way? You are used to photocopying handouts, small books. God is saying, write something that will take nations. Are you getting blessed tonight? We are going to pray. See, the point of my message tonight is to reveal to you that your mindset has been keeping you where you are. As a ministry, we are where we are today because of our mindset. If we rise higher, we will move higher. Hallelujah. You see a lot of people, 10 years, 20 years, 5 members, 10 members, they keep giving all kinds of flimsy excuses. Good preachers, but bad leaders. They won't read about leadership. They won't read about all of these things. They won't increase. They won't go anywhere. You will remain at the level you are until light comes to pick you out of there. He said, arise and shine. Why? For your light. New knowledge. I promise you, you will remain at any level you are in life until light. If you are ready to disengage your former mindset and pick up something new, you can rise on that level. Hallelujah. God is telling you, you can be a TV host. And you sit and say, I can't speak English. How many months does it take to learn sound English? I won't go back I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence the way you grew up you cannot remain like that I won't go back I can't go back to the way it used to be before your presence every time I look at myself I see a great leader I see a visionary leader I have such a healthy perspective of my life I admire people but not enough to intimidate myself because I have stayed long enough in the secret place to know the things that he has put in me and I know they will open any door many of you are trying to be like people who will one day admire you in the future did you know that i i, I wanted to be like many people who want to be like me today because i did not know what i carried and so we have all kinds of models on tv rihanna who again and you look at them and you smile you imagine yourself in their place wrong models and you begin to follow their own path and you end up in destruction i told myself i will not die the way i was born i was born quietly only my mother and a few visitors i wouldn't die that way jesus was born in a manger when he was going back to heaven there was a crowd celebrating him let me tell you something you can choose to rise beyond your level there are many of us abu has limited you carryover has limited you 
your class of degree has limited you. You think you may never rise beyond that level. You must believe in yourself. Listen to me. I'm speaking to you right now. You must believe in yourself. Believe that you can become anything. The only limitation in my life is the voice of the Holy Spirit. As far as I'm concerned, there is nothing I cannot become. Nothing. 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 I remember when we were going to have our crusade in 2006. We are organizing it. You are going to a local government. Young. Just smiling. All we had was faith. But we knew we were going to do it. They limited God many of you have limited god every time you look at the frustration of your family members god tells you you are the savior you will arise but every time god speaks it another voice another voice starts speaking to you and many of us have yielded to those voices oh i believe in myself i have a great life i'm telling you i'm telling you the best that god has for me is my heritage in christ I believe I will write books that will shake this generation. Yeah, I believe it. Listen, we said this thing, sir, right from those days. We'll pray and say we know it, that God will do it. That's why I tell some of you, make faith proclamations. Whenever you say I'm great, you just look. You say I even trekked from campus to come. So what? So what? There is nothing you are going through today that somebody did not go through and conquered it. Some of you have not eaten anything. You came for koinonia hungry. It's not because restaurants closed today. It's because you didn't have money. Let me tell you something. That is not enough to give you a mindset that you are a failure. Every time you go to your mother or your father, they call you and say, my son, my daughter. It's not like I don't love you. You know if I had more, I would have given. If I were you, I would go back and say, Lord, Take me out of this mindset. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Make me a world changer. And let my parents have a foretaste. The man called Pan and Pasi Paul was living in my auntie's boy's quarters. Used to stay in my auntie's boy's quarters. When he started his kind of music, they kicked him out of many churches in Joss. But today, when you enter his office, you see awards that you cannot imagine. Hallelujah. So, the first point tonight is refuse to remain where you are. This is why we teach the things we are teaching. You must know that you are a leader. You won't be a follower forever. Say, I will not be a follower forever. Say it. You cannot remain a follower forever. You cannot remain in a rented house forever. You grew up there. You saw them humiliating your father and your mother. You are not doing anything about it. God is speaking to you tonight. He said, I'm a lady, but nobody has come to marry me. That's a mindset that needs to leave you. Because you believe that your life is tied around a man. Hallelujah. There are many guys here. You are just waiting to graduate. Some of you got your service this today. You are happy. Not because they give awards in service place. But because of how much is the Yalawi? 18.5. And you are smiling. In your world, that's prosperity. Say, I never had it that good. Leave me. Let me enjoy it. Your lecturer looks at you. And says, I brought your test and I look. You are a dull student. I've always known. Pretty lady, dull head. And you carry that mindset. You define yourself. I refuse any report that is not the word of God. Whatever my father did not have, I will give it to them. Whatever my mother did not have, I will give it to them. I told my mother this. I told her, you relax. Since I'm already alive, I'm walking. You just get ready to smile every day of your life 
the remaining part of your life will be years of laughter john the baptist was called a son of consolation many of you the way you are going you see someone 35 years your parents are still helping you 35 years you are 35 years no pressure will you marry i'll think about it what are you doing in your life that lad nobody should leave me alone i'm not a small child and every time they put small food say i'm not a small child so you know back out back out of your father's house no sense of responsibility you are not paying any bills you are not doing anything the little money you get you go and play football you come back in the evening throw your boots everywhere what kind of life is this and you went to school you read you graduated but your mindset has betrayed you and everything people just say so somebody in your village calm down before you finish calling the names of innocent people in your village find out how see there are many ministries claiming blessings oh we are working in millions ask them do you have an account do you have an account they say no whose account will you use say well uh, when it comes we will be able to arrange ourselves let me tell you something it will end in those loud noise in the mic you are not pre the bible says go and borrow vessels if you truly believe that new oil is coming borrow vessels it didn't say borrow oil it said borrow vessels hallelujah three ways to transform your mind right quickly number one ah, the lord is challenging people tonight right number one generally speaking all right this is just generally speaking you need a new orientation whenever you find out that you have a faulty mindset the bible says you cannot put new wine in what an old wine skin you need both a new wine and a new wine skin you want to transform your mind number one realize that your present mindset is not its best realize it come to terms with it i don't care if your father is a billionaire it's your father's money it's not your money i don't care if you're a five pointer or you're a one pointer i don't care if you are working in a bank or you are working in an oil company listen to me there is more in your life you cannot remain this way I've always known that there's more in my life some of you are here and all that is in your world is you are local champions here in zaria the best student in your class and you think that's how the world will treat you everywhere you step out and find out a rude shock when i was in secondary school we used to win every debate we go to we didn't know that it was just that our standard was low i was saying we are very smart people one day we tried one school I won't mention the name. Ah! We tried one school. What they did for us that day. I was one of the speakers. We embarrassed ourselves that day. We hated our school that day. Hated the principal and everybody. I just looked at them. I wished I wasn't in that school because we're local champions in our little local government where we were hallelujah the first day i tried jam mathematics after five hours i got four only four i said this is serious serious i was the best student in my class i said this is serious a mindset kept me believing that i'm a superstar now jam brought their question I didn't do four damas so i knew that this is not child's play immediately i recognized the need hallelujah i started organizing lessons for my classmates a rescue mission quick because i told them look let me tell you we we'll write waek and bishop because of that i started challenging myself I tried GC. I did very well. 
And when I looked, I said, there's got to be more. There's got to be more. I was a laboratory prefect. I wouldn't go out. Oh. I locked myself in the lab there. Because I didn't know more. So I thought all that there was was intellect. But I sat down there. The other best student. In my school then, the smartest student got lab and library, not head boy. Head boy was for talkatives. If you were smart and they wanted it to have a good result, you become the library prefect or the lab prefect so that you can sit there in one place. I made up my mind not to be small. I started reading further maths on my own. 60% of my chemistry I learned it by myself. See, I didn't do the kind of your school. In our own school, we are building the school as students. When you misbehave, you just go and change. Oh yeah! Change and go and serve job. Some of you were, you were to schools where you already laptop. Did we ever have a laptop? We had to borrow Whitstone Bridge for work. Yet I, I told myself, I said, this will not define my life. I'm going far. Are you listening to me? Many of you have kept yourself in positions giving flimsy excuses. I told myself one day my world will celebrate me. Number one, go for knowledge. Buy the truth. Please write. Buy the truth. Read books that will mold your character. Read books that will teach you leadership. Read books on fatherhood. Read books on ministry. This is why we are putting together a school of ministry. The school of ministry is not for pastors. The school of ministry is to raise ambassadors in all spheres. Hallelujah. Raise ambassadors. Go for knowledge. Look at me. Many of you have ne some of you apart from your grammar english grammar that you read you've never sat down to read any book and finish it you look at a book five thousand naira is over my dead body five thousand abba what will five thousand do i can buy beans i can buy one tier of 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 gary and mix all this in. that's why it's only <laughs> my mother says only your stomach that will be coming out your destiny will remain where it is because that's the only thing you are feeding. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Some of you, God has told you you'll be a leader over many. What books have you read about leadership? You don't know anything about leadership. So you are doing traditional leadership in your faculty. Because that's all you know. That's what you saw the king, <laughs> the king of your village do. Now you have become a president. And you, are, you just imagine... The members of the cabinet, those people that are carry Koboko and follow King, and you begin to treat people because that's what you know. When life puts pressure on you, you reveal your mindset. Many of you lack character, you lack communication skills. You wake up in the morning, you cannot greet your roommate to say good morning. Say, Am I a child? They gave birth to me 5th of October 1975. You, they gave birth to you. 6th of October. Am I not older? You see, mindset. Mindset. You eat food and ask the person, carry the plate. Mindset. What? When, will, when has it given anybody food? And you are bold to say it. When people come, you say, this is my younger brother. Must you tell us? Are we blind? Forget the fact that he's bigger than me. He's my young. Calm down. Mindset. You'll never be a leader with this mindset. You may be a good tongue talker. You may be a good miracle worker. But you cannot take your world this way. Because the world you are going to take are not born again. It takes more than just praying in tongues to take your world. Are you listening to me? There must be a level. I was reading an article by Jimo Ibrahim. He just celebrated his 46th birthday and I was so touched. I was just reading about his history. Jimo Ibrahim. Some of you don't even know who is. Who is Jimo Ibrahim? You are in Nigeria here. The only thing you know is, is 
What's, which is the latest soup opera now? They don't do it again. Paloma, second chance. That's all you know. That's why you are behaving like what you have been watching. But tonight I'm challenging you. Say after me, I go for knowledge. Because see, when you begin to, the Bible says, look for. It says, Jesus took the book and he saw where it was written by prophet Isaiah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. He found in the volume of the books where it was written. You can find your destiny when you go for knowledge. The first book I began to read when I made up my mind to walk in destiny was discovering your potentials. Dr. Miles Monroe, I will never forget what that book did for me. Understanding your potentials. I didn't even know there was something called potentials. And I said, all right, this is it. This is it. I will begin a journey. Read books on leadership. You are always fighting with your sister at home. It's a sign that you are going to beat up your wife. Get a book on fatherhood quick. Quick! Every small child you see, you say, me, I hate children. Ah, that's a revelation that you need to read something. Go to Sunday school books. CEM, read something. Read scriptures about Jesus relating with children. Receive that impartation. Some of you are about to write your exams. Once again, the mindset that brought you, I patched three C's, added two more, and I came to this school. And now God is telling you this semester you will have the best of results. And you laugh. You say, Where are them? Uh, where are them? So, 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 so. As if their success will stop your own. I believe in myself. I know that God can take me anywhere. Do you believe this about yourself? Hallelujah. I will never be small in life. No. Never. I will do great things for the kingdom. This is why I like Christ, Christ Embassy. Oh, they give you a mindset of a champion. They give you a mindset of a warrior. They, they shape a mindset that refuses failure totally. I refuse to be a failure in life. I refuse it. I refuse the limitations of my lineage. Whoever has looked at your family and said, can anything good come? You hold on and see. You are a miracle on your way to happen. Are you listening to me? Everyone. God has given you a music ministry. Every time you look at these great people, who told you you cannot become like one of them? Every man in the earth today was born. He was a baby in the hands of someone. A mindset took him to where he is. They asked Jimo Ibrahim, they said, what is the secret of your blessings? And he said, number one, the grace of God. He said, number two, knowledge. He said, sometimes I look at Nigerians, if they know what I know, they will live where they are instantly. Do you know that's true? The same way you can grow in knowledge and mindset and change different things. Look at what God is doing by the grace of God. The organization, the leaders and the rest. You think this is guesswork? This is not just prayer. Many of you want great leaderships. You want a great business, great company, great this. You have the name, but you've not read any book. If you like, go and register the name. You will remain a broke failure in life. Broke failure until the mindset of God takes you out of that level. Hallelujah. The people from my place drink. They drink a lot. I told myself that mindset, I will kick it out of my life. I will never be associated with the evil that comes from my territory are you listening to me there are some of you your your clans or villages are associated with different kinds of things temper lust immorality demonic practices irresponsibility will you take this as a mindset and say it happens to everybody is it my fault that i was born from so so place hallelujah one day your father looked at you and said sorry i cannot pay your school fees and you had to fend for yourself are you going to allow your children to think like that 
many of you are shallow minded you're not thinking five years from now you're not thinking 10 years from now let me and i'm speaking to the guys most especially you are just growing old and, and, and growing beard on your face you are not adding anything to your head per day i never sleep any day until i add new knowledge to myself never my eyes does not see sleep until i add something the more you have knowledge you will be in command in life look at the chinese north korea the whole hands their hands is like from here to here short people but they are ruling the world because it's not about their size it's about their intellectual capacity many of you need to begin to buy books is oga jordan around he didn't come oga jordan where is he it's outside jordan bookstore is there see it's better for you to buy one trouser 250 250 naira on the floor they may laugh at you but not for long i assure you it won't be for long show me a man who will pay the price to change his mindset you are in partnership with god for a victorious life you won't die a failure it may take a while hallelujah do you believe this about yourself when god called me i believed i have never sat down to think kai am i too small am i no i don't think all those kinds of satanic thoughts because i found in philippians chapter 2 verse 8 it said finally brethren whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are true i can go anywhere i can do anything if god tells me to build a 10-story building for koinonia off i go off i go you will be saying it won't happen you will just find out that will give you letter for the dedication confidence Kabbalah, tabayara. but i know whom i have believed see i want you to be confident about your life if you are not confident about your life you will need someone else to keep endorsing you there are many of you that will never be satisfied you do a nice hair you know it's nice you need 10 people to tell you it's nice before you believe what kind of life is that stop trying to prove points and settle down go for knowledge say i contend for knowledge say it yes you may stay in the house you fetch water from the stream you are still doing it right now fetch the water from the stream but carry your bible and carry the book say lord one day i will have i will have boreholes and i'll build boreholes in my village hallelujah you eat once a week no problem in the midst of your pain just tell yourself i'm changing my mind i'm changing my life i told myself this thing long ago hallelujah i believe in ear and i i believe in where god is taking us that's why all the things that are happening today it's not a shock we are just grateful never a shock not at once see listen it's not happening because of joshua selman it's happening because of a mindset i assure you if you have it you will rise whether you are on jeans or you are it's about your mindset are you listening to me some of you god is speaking to you about bakeries you have passion for bread but you are sitting down you are saying bakery i went to school sit down there the day someone who will pe see prophecies are like rain whoever brings a container will receive with it and will run you will sit down there and be delaying you will watch someone run with your vision and accomplish it i believe that by the grace of god one day we will own our television station debt free we will stand on air telling anybody please bring 35 dollars and five cents no because God has given us the law of prosperity. It's a matter of time. Gentiles will come from. A day will come. It will be a privilege to partner with us. Or it will happen. Do you believe this about your life? I believe a day will come. When I will not even be allowed to buy anything with my money. Because people we have changed will be too grateful. Too grateful. They will make my daughter head girl by force. Just as a way of. It's my mind. It's my mind. 
One day my child will say, Daddy, can I have this in the freezer? I say, go on. I didn't enjoy it. Have it. What will your child say the day he calls you, Daddy? Will he say, Daddy, I have something that I want to discuss with you. Why are we like this? Change your mindset. You have received a wrong mindset. Many of us do not like what we receive from our parents. But you are already becoming what you hate. Because you are not doing anything about your mindset. Exactly what you hate, you are already becoming it. I refuse to remain the way I am. I contend for knowledge. I won't behave like a Nigerian. I will behave like a citizen of the... What is in it for me? That's the language of Nigerians. Chop! I chop. You can never help somebody and go quietly. What is in it for me? Wrong mindsets we got from Nigeria. Many of you are adopting it. You like it. Someone says, do you have the number of somebody? Yes, I have. Send me 200 naira recharge card. You would think you are joking, but now you are used to it. But I deliver you from that mindset tonight. Tonight we are going to be praying. So number one, go for knowledge. Number two. Consistently speak the word of God. Consistently speak the word of God. Speak the word of God. Speak the word of God. The word of God comes with power. The word of God comes with hope. Hallelujah. I was talking with the protocol team yesterday and I was telling them a day will come who will have bosses. Bosses. E S S S S S S S S bosses that we can give a way to help many people. Look at today, by the grace of God, we are going to Shika tomorrow and Sunday. Hallelujah. And we're not even thinking about the budget. Oh, well, we do this. The grace of God. We are going to now start becoming a blessing to others. You, if you do not believe, do you know many people will suffer because of your mindset? You can be a blessing to the world. I refuse to be where I will not remain in this state. Next month, I should have left this realm of reality to a higher one. I learned this from Samadayami. Oh, I have certain people who have mentored my mind. Some of you sit down there. God is telling you, listen to Samadayami and Matu Ashimolo to understand success principles. Your pastor is there with his mindset telling you don't listen to anybody again. He's a broke failure. It's just that he's called. He's sitting there and he's educating you in your little world. And you will not break boundaries and see what God is doing internationally. Was this message preached by my pastor? No, I won't listen to it. And you remain there. Hallelujah. You see an elderly woman speaking wisdom about family life. You won't humble yourself and listen. You say, I'm a pastor in my church. You are fumbling, fumbling in life and you won't calm down and listen. Are you learning something, please? See, you must begin a project and tell yourself you are changing your mindset. I'm changing it. I'm changing it. Hallelujah. When Tosin was the former treasurer, she surprised me. When we just started Koinonia, listen, when we just started Koinonia, this offering bags that we have was a personal donation. We just started and she made at least 400. And she began to tell me, she said, Josh, I think we need to start preparing for a counting machine. Counting machine? She said, because I see increase coming. What's your thought like? Your many parents didn't plan. They put one small house with one garage. They never planned for increase. That's how many of you are thinking. My little life, my house, one room, all the children will stay. Me and my wife will stay. An extra room where we are fighting, she will stay there. That's your mindset.
Listen. Say after me, I break free. Everybody inside and outside, I break free from the mindset that came from my village that is associated with my lineage. Tonight, I break free in the name of Jesus. I declare that I rise above cultural limitations. I rise above the limitations in Africa. The world will hear my voice. I'm the head and not the tail. I have books to write. I have lives to change. I'm a leader. Yes. That's how you speak. And then you behave like one. You start composing yourself like one. No misbehavior. Iron your shirt. Dress smart. If you are babbing, bab well. Don't bab as if they took light and, and, and you ran out. Be smart. It doesn't matter what you have. Your notebooks are your right. Be smart. When you get up in the morning, dress your bed. Keep your room clean. You are behaving like your, your future. Many of us are still behaving like our past. God gave you a bed. You are still remembering the days of the match. You don't need to repair match. You just stand up and leave your bed sheet. White bed sheet. It has turned to brown. Visitors come and say, have seat, please. Dirty bed sheet like that. You are not going far with that mindset. And some of you are ladies. You won't go far. Forget about all these things. Walk on yourself this night. Hallelujah. You want to be a leader. You cannot sit down. The day 5,000 enters your body, you are, you are shaking. You must see that you must spend everything. You withdraw it and just put it in your pocket. You are not using it, but you are just happy. You are just walking around filled with anxiety. What kind of life is that? See, I'm challenging you. We are going to pray. But God is speaking to someone. Enough is enough. Are you going to continue where your parents stopped? Or you are going to rise? God gave you a job. You are not doing your best now. They ask you why. You say because I'm collecting 10,000. Bible says he who is faithful in little. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? I break free from mindsets. I want to teach you four things very quickly. Right. I taught it some years ago. To help us conduct ourselves very well and behave like leaders i want to teach you four very important words number one please write it p-l-e-a-s-e -E, please write it quick and look at me please because we're going to pray we're out of time look at me many of you this is the singular word that has cheated you from your destiny you can never say please Carry this thing and give me. Please. Everybody say after me, please. Did he kill you? Say it again, please. Learn it. This is why many of you were not voting. They, they didn't make you the president in your family. Never become it. Because you cannot be cautious. Let me tell you something. When you tell people, please, it's a sign of value on them that you respect them that you honor them the highest psychological need of any man is to feel valued and to feel important please can you help me please can you do this please tell him i may not make it please learn it this singular word has made people millionaires and has made others broke and they will continue remaining where they are as failures please Please, I may not be free now. Please, I may not. Hello, hello, hello. Call me, call me. Call me, I don't have credit. Thank you. You are praying in tongues. I assure you, you won't be a leader. If I am the person, I'm, I'm doing interview for your employment, I guarantee you, I will employ you. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. You may be attending Koinonia, I will employ you. Guaranteed. Hallelujah. Please. 
give me cold water my chest this food is hot give me cold water is it your own you came to someone's house they are treated please everybody say after me please learn to say please i'm teaching you how to be a leader learn to say please some of you you only say it when you are in trouble please many of you guys if only you told the lady please she would have said yes you carried your mouth and just came tongue talking but no manners grace but no character I want to talk to you. I'm saying I want to talk to you. You are going, come now. Is he your younger sister? And then during relationship program, say, there are some people here. When we tell them to come, they won't come. Why would they come? Why? It takes a lot of humility and it reveals a sense of maturity and courtesy. When you tell people please one more time say please say it please number two i'm sorry i'm sorry has made two nations to go for war one demanded a public apology the other one said over my dead body says all right we'll kill ourselves over our dead bodies i'm sorry listen when you say i'm sorry it's not a sign of weakness is a sign of tremendous strength many husbands have fought with their wives because they cannot say i'm sorry pastors are fighting one another they cannot say i'm sorry hallelujah politicians are fighting themselves they cannot say i'm sorry you call me a pastor instead of a reverend just say i'm sorry say uh -huh. Uh -huh. i'm sorry i'm sorry ah why didn't you i'm sorry see sometimes you must not be the one at fault to say i'm sorry sometimes you just need to say it and let it be there is a saying in my language that if because you are holding bone flies are disturbing your mouth throw the bone and let the flies go with it nice proverb not dull proverbs that don't have meaning very nice proverb hallelujah everybody say i'm sorry I, you didn't do anything but just say it you are learning say i'm sorry now turn to your neighbor and say i'm sorry some of you it will sting your ego that's the mindset i want to go out say do it again i'm sorry from today listen now that i have access to you i must teach you and you must learn it by force tomorrow will not be able to say it pastor to members whatever i'm sorry when you hurt people tell them you are sorry i'm sorry sometimes you may do it unconsciously whenever you are aware i'm sorry mean it from your heart not this kind of wicked i'm sorry that is even more painful it's better to keep quiet they say two of you apologize i'm sorry is that a problem see two couples who call for counseling okay it's okay it's okay say i'm sorry I'm sorry. Say, darling, I'm darling, I'm sorry. You know that this, this, this is not, they are not even ready for reconciliation. But the Bible says God has given us what? The ministry of reconciliation. Everybody say after me, I'm sorry. You must learn it. People hurt you every day and you are hurting others as much as they are hurting you. So you must get set with, I'm sorry. You will use it many times in your life. Are you learning something this night? Is something changing in your mind many of you after this grace you just need to call you are broken you are suffering because you didn't tell your father i'm sorry they would have sent you money since january you have not received your allowance now is march only that day i'm sorry i shouted at you that day i'm sorry and monday you will get an alert but you are sitting here you are dying your father is enjoying you are suffering please after this go and take your phone or break your pride and help yourself exam is coming next week I'm sorry. Number three. Thank you. Thank you. Look up. Look up. Do you know thanksgiving is the principle of multiplicity in the realm of the spirit? Are you listening to me? 
when you thank someone for what he has done he will reproduce it hallelujah thank you if someone does something good to you 20 times say thank you 20 times 20 times don't say i said it one i, I said it one huh? 20 times thank you say after me thank you an expression of gratitude an expression of compliment see these are the things that make people to love being around certain atmospheres some of you now see the reason why you don't have any friend you are your only friend your environment is is acidic it chokes everyone that comes around you thank you someone buys you a present someone says ah um you were supposed to iron your shirt i just ironed it for you because i thought you'll be praying you say eh -eh. that's exactly what you do to your wife she just cooks i said darling nice meal is it mm -hmm. i'm reading newspaper thank you does not kill thank you everybody say after me thank you you go for an interview please may i sit yes you sit down when you finish the interview you say thank you you are talking in a meeting whether business meeting or leadership meeting they say all right you speak thank you for the opportunity to speak this is what i have to say ah, people will be looking at you they'll say now we need a chairman for this but before they say anything they say you are the one you see the reason why many people pray in tongues they pour gallons of oil on them but they remain where they are because their mindsets betray them you got first class but you don't have manners no character wrong mindset and you are not walking till today hallelujah everybody say after me thank you you must cultivate it tell people thank you someone adjust your seat someone held you thank you thank you don't say if i speak too much i'll become cheap say mindset where did you get it from finally god bless you oh you must learn to bless people When I taught it four years ago, I added one, I love you. But our society has become so bad. You tell someone I love you, say you mean it. Instead of him to say thank you. Say, ah, why did you say this now? So let's stop at God bless you. <laughs> we say I love you when we're in Colonia here. Or you go and tell your classmate tomorrow. First you say, my God, this is unbelievable. Ah. Say after me, God bless you. In Jewish days, if you curse your son, they will, they will stone you to death. They blessed their children. Even the Lord spoke in numbers to Aaron and said, In this manner you shall bless the people. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. It was a benediction of blessing that was given to the people every time. Many of you don't bless people. They come to you, they go back scattered and battered. There must be words of love. See, just these things I've taught you, I assure you, is enough to make you an extraordinary leader. Let's review it very quickly. We are praying. Number one. You, you see, you cannot remember. Number one. Say it. See, some of us are feeling like big boys and big girls. You see, this is the, this is the mindset. When you say, please, you are feeling kind. Like this thing where you are making us become like children. Are you mature the way you are behaving? Say after me, please. Number two. Number three. Number four. Don't never forget this. Begin to use it immediately begin to use it immediately it will work like magic for you see many of you are already feeling a healthy esteem about yourself because you're announcing that ah so i'm having some secrets now i'll go and try it 
let me tell you it will open some doors for you beyond your imagination please use it for your roommate and see the way they will love you say this is my roommate you don't know my roommate that's why no matter what i use use it just use it first rise up on your feet and let's pray strongholds of the mind walk around and pray in one minute and say lord i have a mindset that needs change from tonight begin a journey in me lift your voice and pray inside and outside begin to pray and prophesy lift your voice and pray say lord my mindset my mindset needs adjustment needs realignment you have begun a work in me help me show me the relevant books the relevant materials the relevant knowledge scriptures that will change me hallelujah look at me we are still praying you're going to pray guys all this sagging your jeans you sag it down and you tie you, you tie your belt on your on your laps instead of your waist it's called stupidity and childishness no lady will marry you like that grow up this night and start behaving well hallelujah oh yes yes lift up your voice and pray and say lord i begin to walk on myself come on you are a leader you can't remain a child forever compose yourself you are going somewhere to happen pray for yourself sister pray for yourself brother there's greatness in me and i'm going somewhere to happen when i was a child i thought like a child i spoke like a child i understood like a child now that i'm a man i lay aside childish ways lift your voice and pray i take responsibility for my life i go for knowledge pray i go for knowledge i go for knowledge I buy the truth and I sell it not. I stop a life of falsehood and I contend for transformation. And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. For all of you who are in front here and for as many who are connecting, grace to run. I shift you speed in your life. Grace to run. Supernatural by the Spirit of God. Supernatural by the Spirit of grace. Your life will be a wonder first to you and to everyone who cares to see. I prophesy again in the name of Jesus your life will be a wonder first to you and to as many who can see listen to me please listen to me our possibilities in this kingdom are predicated upon the kind the level and the dimension of grace that is upon our lives it is true I'm not wasting your time. This is by the Spirit of God. Because there are certain testimonies that are long overdue. And in the name of Jesus, I push you into them. I push you by prophecy. I push you into them. I clear every barrier that vows that you will not move. This is koinonia. Step into that prophecy. Step into that dimension. Step into that prophecy. Step into that dimension in the name of Jesus. Please be seated. For every one of you who is out here, I pray for you. 
the evidence of this that has come upon you may it appear unto all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ you will return with strange and shocking testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ please return back to your seat let me perform one more function you don't have to come out but the Lord is leading me if you are here and you are walking and you are overdue for promotion just stand up where you are the Lord is speaking to me listen to me there is a God in heaven oh don't get too used to the pride of men there is a God in heaven who regulates times and seasons in the name of Jesus Christ according to the word of the Lord sent to me for you I declare by the Spirit of God from this week coming not next week by the Spirit of grace I decree and declare step into the level that is due you through favor through grace as far as your career is concerned in the name of Jesus Christ it didn't take long for Joseph to rise Joseph said, let there be searched for, if you can find, a man who is discreet and wise. And the king said, there's no man. And instantly, he was promoted to be a prime minister. One of the things I hope we learn is the power of the supernatural. The supernatural is not about falling down and rolling up and down. Programming spiritual possibilities by the ministry of the word the ministry of the spirit you will always not look like it but there is a grace that keeps shifting you into it <laughs> hallelujah please be seated the lord bless you in jesus name i welcome every one of you who is worshiping with us for the first time we have a few minutes to look into the word of god the Lord bless us in Jesus name I want to teach tonight by the leading of the Spirit in a very brief but powerful powerful topic hallelujah I like you to pay attention just like um, Pastor Pete said this is a ministry of signs and wonders and whilst the Word of God is coming it's more than an information it's more than a lecture it's more than the exegesis of Scripture is more than the communication of doctrine as the word of god comes it comes with it the grace to make you walk in the reality of that which is being taught and so it's not unusual to have impartations whilst this is happening hallelujah and so please be your brother's keeper whilst this happens so that people do not injure themselves Second Corinthians chapter 10, we'll read from verse 4 and 5. Second Corinthians chapter 10, we'll read from verse 4 and 5. Please give it to us. Second Corinthians chapter 10, from verse 4 and 5. The Bible says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, man-made. It says, But they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds verse 5 it says casting down imaginations is the greek word yetzah and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of god then it says bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ paul whilst mentoring the church did not leave them in the dark as to how people rise and as to how people become victims of situations and circumstances for a very long time the body of Christ has placed emphasis on the spirit and the spiritual growth of men and women which is very profitable but we have ignored the realm of the mind we have ignored it to our detriment and to our own peril the Bible is very clear about the fact that the mind of man has a role to play in his or her actualizing their destiny their divine destiny in Christ and the Lord just put it strongly in my heart to share with us on the subject of strongholds 
and mindset. This is very powerful. It's going to be a brief teaching and then we will pray. Strongholds and mindsets. Proverbs chapter 4 again and verse 23. Proverbs 4 and verse 23. The Bible says to keep your heart with all diligence. And there is a reason for that instruction. It was not a suggestion. It was an instruction. Keep your heart. The word heart um, is used interchangeably in scripture with mind. Keep your heart with all diligence. It says for out of it are the issues of life. This is a very deep statement. So the issues of life doesn't come into you. It comes out of you. It says out of it are the issues of life. Write this down, please. A stronghold, may this be someone's deliverance tonight. A stronghold is a sustained faulty pattern of thinking that is based on lies and is based on deception. Let me define what I call a lie. A lie is not an incorrect statement in the kingdom. A lie is anything God did not say. A lie is not just an incorrect statement based on whatever reference. A lie is anything God did not say. No matter how true it is, no matter how sociologically accepted it is, if it did not come from the mouth of God in the kingdom, we call it a lie. Is someone getting blessed? So a stronghold is a sustained faulty pattern of thinking based on lies, now you understand, and based on deception. But it doesn't stop there. That faulty thinking has now been fortified by the presence of demon spirits to ensure that the victims remain at that state. So when demon spirits build a fortification around a thinking, this is the kind of condition that makes the word of God of none effect. Please pay attention. What then is a mindset? Let me define it very quickly. Mindsets refer to ideologies. Mindsets refer to value systems. Mindsets refer to perspectives. So when we talk about a mindset, we're talking of an ideology, a value system, a perspective, a viewpoint, a plane of perception. Mindsets are gates and doorways in the spirit. This is a very powerful information that your mindset is literally a gate and a doorway in the realm of the spirit giving access to the ministry of the Holy Spirit and giving access, if you allow, to demon spirits. You have to pay attention. Mindsets are gates. Mindsets are doorways in the spirit. They permit the operation of the Holy Spirit or the operation of demons in the life of an individual. So when mindsets are fortified by the presence of demon spirits they become strongholds a faulty pattern of thinking that has now been fortified by the presence of demon spirits and as a result the victim is compelled to keep thinking a certain way and the law is that the signs follow them that believe that means what is following you is a report card of what you believe you do not drive them away. You change what you believe. Are we together now? What is following you is a report card. It's telling us the sum total of your ideologies, your belief systems. These signs shall follow them that believe. These signs of failure shall follow them that believe in failure. These signs of retrogression shall follow them that believe in retrogression. These signs of limitation shall follow them that believe in limitation. The signs tell us what you believe. Are we together? I said mindsets are gates and they are doorways in the spirit. They permit the operation of the Holy Spirit and they permit the operation of demons. Now write this down please. The quality of a man's life is directly tied to his mindset. 
the quality of a man's life is directly tied to scripture tied to his mindset the quality of a man's life believe me when i tell you this that the quality of your life is not just predicated on the love of god the same lord is rich unto all are we together now yes the quality of your mindset is the quality of your life here's how the bible puts it proverbs chapter 23 please proverbs 23 and verse 7 proverbs 23 and verse 7 it says for as he thinketh in his heart interchange for mind it didn't say so he will be you already are what your mind says you are for as he thinketh in his heart so is he If your mind is defeated, you are defeated. If your mind is victorious, you are victorious. If your mind builds it, then it is truly built. If your mind destroys it. So Paul says, even what we call warfare is largely in the realm of the mind. The contention, Satan, the God of this world, has an assignment to blind your mind. Not just your eyes. You do not see with your eyes. You see through your eyes. You see with your mind. It is true. Define our limits and our possibilities in life. Mindsets define our limits. They also define our possibilities in life. This is true. Your mindset can peg you at a level, regardless God's prophetic word over your life. Your mindset can define your limit. Your mindset can define your possibilities in life. The third point very quickly and then I'll begin to share a few things. Now, this one is a very serious point I want you to pay attention to. A man's mindset can limit God in his life. Very dangerous but powerful scripture. As mighty and powerful as God is, a man's mindset can limit God. Psalm 78, please. Psalm 78. We we'll read from verse 41. Psalm 78 and verse 41. The Bible says, yea, they turned back and tempted God. It says, and limited the Holy One of Israel. The first day I read this scripture, I almost threw my Bible to say, who wrote this? How could a man limit the God of the heavens? The psalmist who said, where can I hide from your presence? Can God be limited? Every time I read the scripture that said, is there anything too hard? The word too hard didn't look godlike. Why would God add too hard? And I found out that the two there comes because of the difficulty in getting man to believe him and walk with him. There was nothing too hard when man was not there. Check Genesis 1. God said he saw. He said he saw. The moment he came into partnership with man, the labor of the Holy Spirit convincing man to rise to the realm of God may make God look as though he's limited. They limited the Holy One. A man's mindset can limit God. Let me tell you this. Just because you have dreams, and visions just because you see in scripture that there are possibilities predestined for you in Christ are we together just because you even have prophetic words over your life is no guarantee that you will step into it by default every dimension of spiritual possibility is dependent on your mindset ask father Abraham Many times God told Abraham, listen carefully, God told Abraham that my intention is to make you a father of all nations. And we know that God does not lie. The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. He became a man, but he is not a man. If God is a man, he must worship who created him. God is not a man. He only became a man so that men might become the sons of God. 
but God is not a man that you should lie. The Bible says, not the son of man that you should repent. Are we together now? It took Abraham a long time because you see, there's something about pain and there's something about limitation. When you try and try and try and it does not work, chances are that you will build a justifiable theology around your pain to explain away the possibility of God triumphing over that situation. And that was the case with Father Abraham. And God kept beckoning on him. Abraham, I want to lift you. I want to bless you. I want you to become the father of nations. And then one time God invented a strategy. He said, Abraham, come out. When he came out, he said, look at the stars. Try counting them. And then he would try. One, two, three, four, I have lost count. He says, so shall thy seed be. And your Bible says, finally, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Are we blessed? But very quickly, how mindsets are formed. Now you want to pay attention. Please pay attention. It's important that we understand and examine and probe carefully how our belief systems are formed. Why? Because we come from different cultures. I come from the Middle Belt, for instance. There are many of us who come from the West, the East, the South, some outside of this country, many following around the world. And historically speaking, we've gone through a lot of evolution, culturally speaking. And so many people have imbibed all kinds of mindsets and all kinds of thinking. This is the reason why the kingdom itself has its culture. Are we together now? I did tell us, I think it was the, our first service here, that you know you are transformed when it's difficult to trace you to an earthly territory. I shouldn't look at you and just say you are a northerner. No, the, the extent of your transformation, you should be so godlike, it should be difficult to associate you with a physical territory. That is proof that you are truly transformed. So walk with me. Is God helping us? Number one. The first way mindsets are formed is culture. 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 Never downplay the effect of culture on your mind and on your thinking. Now, there are many healthy aspects of culture, many, many healthy aspects of culture. However, however, there are destructive aspects of culture Many of us here, I believe that we have cultural ties that if we have our way, we will run away from almost every, this is Africa, and there is almost no tribe that does not have something about their culture that is anti-Christ, anti-God, anti-kingdom. Are we together now? Remember, we are believers. Culture is wonderful. There are healthy aspects of culture that inculcate morals like respect for elders, etc. But there are many demonic and destructive dimensions of culture. And you see, when you come into the faith life, you have a choice. Either to subscribe to the ways of the kingdom or to incorporate dangerous and destructive aspects of culture that impede the operation of the Holy Ghost in our lives. Are you blessed? Culture. It is amazing the variety of evil that many cultures, many cultures promote all kinds of things. And sincerely, the promoters of these things don't have to be evil people. They are people who are being faithful stewards of something that was committed to them also. Hallelujah. Number two, the second way mindsets are formed past experiences good or bad your past experience can have a very negative effect on your life ask Nathaniel when Jesus sent for him and Nathaniel heard about Jesus that Nazarene who was doing great things here's what Nathaniel said can anything good come out of Nazareth he was not speaking out of ignorance there was a track record that Nazarenes did not amount to much but this one was different. Hallelujah. Just like you are different. I'm walking in power. 
walking in miracles, I live a life of favor, cause I know who I am. So he said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? And then when he came and met Jesus, Jesus surprised him. He says, while you were under the tree, I saw you and said, wow, who is this? He said, just because I told you this, you're now amazed. You will see greater things than this. You will see the heavens open and the angels ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. Our past can be dangerous. Some of us come from families where nothing was ever gotten with ease. So the moment we teach that there is a possibility for ease in the kingdom, that reality has not been captured in your mind. You can receive every other prophetic word but that because your experience fights that prophetic word. Are we together? Africa, for instance, this is our beloved continent, this is our beloved nation. But did you know that there is a spirit in this nation and in Africa that fights early achievement? The moment you do anything early, people say something is wrong. It's true. When you read about the patriarchs, our fathers of faith in modern history, some of them began to shake the world as teenagers. Joash in the Bible was king at age 8. Josiah was king at age 9. It was as a teenager that David brought Goliath down. There is a spirit that celebrates lateness. There is a spirit that celebrates a, a snail-like advancement in our territory. And we have received it as a heritage. At 33 years, Jesus had turned the world upside down. Is God speaking to us now? Our past experiences. Some of us, respectfully speaking, came from maybe polygamous families. Some of us came from backgrounds where we were not so financially advantaged. Some of us came from backgrounds with all sorts of variations. And you will be surprised the degree to which your past has become a stronghold in your mind. They came out of Egypt in one day, but it took 40 years for Egypt to come out of them. They kept carrying Egypt as they moved. And every time God wanted to do great things, Egypt was saying, no, go back. Just because you are physically out of your territory does not mean you are free. Are we blessed? The past. The past. So when you hear things like favor upon your life, you just laugh and say, look, um, I'm interested in progress, not favor. Let it just be that I'm moving, no matter how slow. And God is saying, no, the unit of destiny is time. I can do something to time to give you an advantage. Hallelujah. Number three. How mindsets are formed. Family background. I won't talk much about that. Don't be offended, but this is true. That sometimes because of the kinds of families that we came from, nuclear families and, and our extended families, whether it's polygamous, you know, traditional, whatever kind of family, you will be amazed for 10 years, for 20 years, for 30 years, you've been hearing people say, talk in certain ways. You will be amazed at the degree to which you have been influenced. And now it has become a stronghold. Being a pastor does not set you free automatically. No. Being educated does not bring you that level of spiritual liberty. You can be very educated. You can rise to the zenith of your profession, academically speaking. And yet you are still in the bondage of family backgrounds. There are people in church, for instance, who fight everybody because they came from a background where fighting and warfare was the order of the day. Everything is for me. My seat is for me. I used to have, for instance, maybe a stepbrother, a stepsister. And so we take that same mindset in the office. We're suspecting everyone. We're angry at everyone. We're praying in tongues. We're genuinely born again, but we are not free. Are we blessed? Family backgrounds. Let me hurry up. Number four. The fourth shaper of our mindsets are our levels of exposure. This is very powerful. Exposure is a miracle and exposure is a blessing, even though it can be destructive. What is exposure? The ability to expand and broaden your horizon, to know the possibilities that are out there 
beyond your scope of reference is called exposure many times we interpret life from the lens of mediocrity the lens of our limitations listen carefully and when god wants to help you he will expose you to new dimensions there are many of us for instance who have not been exposed to certain possibilities that is in christ for instance we have not been exposed to the reality of the healing power of jesus the restoring power that is in jesus the love of god like the bible says the fellowship of the holy spirit in acts chapter 18 don't turn there the bible talks to us about a man called apollos are we together the bible says he was a great man fervent in spirit he was eloquent but he knew only the baptism of john if you read only apollo's book for the rest of your life you would never know that the holy spirit is a person who you can relate to you can relate with i am always i am ever conscious of the fact that there is more than i can than i'm now seeing it is it is important small businesses small ministries small families small destinies small goals i'm not talking of some carnal ambitious things that don't have a divine bearing no not at all exposure is a miracle when god wants to step you to the place of destiny he does not travel with your body he travels with your mind your body only goes where your mind has gone when your mind returns back, it is your mind is the authorized usher that takes your body to the place of destiny. Hmm. The father saw the possibility of the whole world coming back to him again, and he sent his son. It was a goal that was doable. He saw the victory that he could give to the saints, not only the victory that he had as God. And so he came and finished that project in three years. The ability to dream with God is a miracle. The ability to conquer the limitations of culture, the limitations of our sociological context, it takes exposure. And for many of us, you see, how you are exposed matters because you can be exposed in a way that destroys you. There are many people, their doom and their unbecoming be began at the instance of a supposed exposure. Exposed to vices, exposed to ways there are many people who were obedient and loving and sincere except that they met a group of people who wrongly exposed them and they became harsh disrespectful dishonoring aggression is not exposure it's immaturity you see but exposure is powerful moses until then had not met the god of the bible he had been in egypt he was being mentored to be the next pharaoh but now he ran away and the Bible says while he was tending his father-in-law's sheep, Jethro, suddenly God was ready to expose him to a new horizon. He was about to meet the God of the Bible. And he saw a bush that was burning and yet not consumed. Ah, Moses said, I didn't see this in my lecture room. With all of the wizardry in Egypt, I didn't see it in this fashion. And a voice came out of it, Moses! take off your shoes your experience your perspective your mindset take it off for where you stand is holy ground it was on the strength of that exposure moses returned back to Ramesses, his half brother and said brother good to see you this time around i didn't come i'm not coming as the weak one who ran away i've met someone there, 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 there's an exposure i've been exposed to his glory his power and his possibilities and that one who opened my eyes instructed me to you let my people go and pharaoh said wow what an interesting lecture i see you've learned a lot janus jambers come and show this man that this is egypt and they threw their rod and moses threw his rod to cut the long story short a time came when the firstborns died and pharaoh came to a point where he realized that there was more nebuchadnezzar was one of such people he was not exposed to certain dimensions beyond his scope of reference he thought he was all and in all and god humbled him exposure is powerful exposed to the light of god 
exposed to the miracle working power did you know why many of the saints when you read several books like God's generals you know why it was easy for them to step into certain dimensions because they were in the atmospheres where they saw it happening why will you doubt the miracle working power of God when right in your presence you watch someone stand up in a wheelchair right in your presence you watch the dead rise so what Satan does to erode spiritual possibilities in a territory is to use subtlety to begin to hide these exposures so that after a long time there are hardly people who have seen those dimensions in God exposure your level of exposure financially spiritually your level of exposure it matters you must contend for a healthy level of exposure listen to me nigeria listen to me africa we have called ourselves many things that god did not call us why because of color of skin because of our sociological limitations because of our history etc but the bible says he that cometh from above is above all you must subscribe to a superior orientation that begins to culture you to believe something you were not born with that's the reason why very few people rise to a global scale because we have been indoctrinated by culture subliminally indoctrinated by respectfully speaking mass media and all kinds of experiences we've been subjugated to believe that just because you are a Nigerian just because you are an African just because you are from one area of the nation or so on and so forth it means you are limited he that cometh from above is above all above all systems above all structures he that cometh from above is above all let me give you the last key how mindsets are formed is god blessing you tonight the fifth way mindsets are formed is association now this is a very serious one association The Bible says God called Abraham. He didn't call Lot. Very interesting scripture. And Lot went with him. God did not call Lot. He called Abraham. But Lot said, I didn't hear God. But at least I heard your obedience. And I'm going to follow you. And by reason of that association, God began to multiply Lot. When Lot forgot that it was because of association, he detached from Abraham. The next time we hear about Lot is in the middle of Sodom and Gomorrah, about to die. Associations are powerful. Get my teaching blessed by association. It's a very powerful teaching. Many people were visionary people on their way to do big things until they became part of groups, associations, clubs, and all kinds of sects that derailed and faded their morals, plunged them into mediocrity and laziness, etc. Associations are powerful. Are we together now? Yes. The Bible says, do not be deceived. It said, bad company can corrupt good morals. It is often said that you are the average of your friends. If there are six people in that group and there are five foolish people, there's about to be a sixth one. He that walks with the wise, he doesn't have to be wise, just walk with the wise. The Bible says, he that walks with the wise shall also be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. There are people who used to have and keep loving families, except that they became part of friends and associations that said, you mean you don't beat your wife? This is Africa. Let me tell you what I did to my wife last week. I beat the living daylight out of her. And there's, there's thorough compliance in that family now. And then the man returns back, you see. Notice, when God came to Adam in the cool of the day, the Bible says, and they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the cool of the day. And he said, Adam, where art thou? And Adam said, I heard your voice and I hid because I was naked. The next question, who told you? You have received an orientation that did not came from did not come from me who did you listen to adam now did not call her the wife he said the woman you gave me and he now turned and said woman what is this that you have done she said the serpent 
Satan became the God of this world because he didn't blame anybody. Every time you transfer responsibility, you also transfer dominion. That's why when Jesus was becoming seen, he didn't speak. He was silent all through. Are we blessed? Yes. Association is powerful. Let me tell you this. Love is a command. Association is not. You must be intentional about your friends. There's no such thing as we grew up together. Edit your relationships with intention and sustain the courage and the boldness to preserve and only keep people in your life who are consistent with your spiritual values and where God is taking you to. Listen to what I'm telling you. This is the plague of Africa. The, the emotional blackmail of saying we were together, we grew up together, we are from the same village, from the same this. No, if they do not sustain the values that make for kingdom come, the values that make for an impactful life, the values that make for intimacy with the Holy Spirit, you don't have to hate them, but off you go. Listen, listen, don't just clap, don't just shout, listen to what I'm saying. Was it not because a man entered other people's boats that they began to sink? Jonah knew what he had done. He knew what he was carrying and he quietly entered into the boat of visionary businessmen who had gone, they had labored, they got their goods, they got everything. I'm sure their wives were happy waiting for them to come. And then everything began to be boisterous and he kept quiet. He was sleeping. They threw their things out. He watched them throw it. Look at the kind of retrogression his presence caused. Let me tell you this. Human beings have prophetic implications. It's true. Jesus fasted and prayed all night to choose 12 disciples. Please help them. Jesus medical people tell us come doctor this is a doctor this is a medical doctor medical people tell us that there are certain diseases that are communicable this is medicine is that true i may not love him i may not believe in him but just, and it can come on you theater that a flu what i breathe example jonah want to lose everything john the upon you courage to edit your association in the name of Jesus Christ. Please sit down. There are people who love the house of God and love the things of God. But many times you will find out that they become part of some sort of group, maybe for from financial benefit, political benefit, etc. And they come and lie to you. That is a nuisance to love God. It's a nuisance to be passionate about the things of God. That's not how politicians rise, they say. That's not how business people rise, they say. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand, if it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. Association can affect your mindset. When you are in the midst of people who pray, I assure you it won't be long before you take God seriously. In fact, let me tell you this. A community life is the key to sustaining kingdom values. You will never be able to grow consistently in isolation. You will need to connect to a body of believers of like-minded passion. 
So when you are praying in the spirit, someone does not look at you and laugh and make you feel stupid for praying in tongues. Then you quickly off your ringtone. Your ringtone is prophesying to you and you off it quickly because you are in an environment where there are unwritten rules that it is you are too civilized and too dignified. Association. I learned this early in life. And for many of us, this may be a message already for you. There's such a psychological pressure to belong. Yes, I know that psychologically speaking, one of the needs of men is to be accepted and to be loved. This is why the Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. He said, I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. He is that friend that can stick closer than a brother. You must trust God for grace. Listen to me carefully. There are many of you, you would have been champions now by the standard of God, but you've surrounded yourself with all kinds of mediocres comparing themselves with themselves and not doing anything global small minds doing small things whereas your contemporaries are changing nations we must trust god for grace edit your association edit your association hallelujah I, will, I heard of a story of a man who was deaf and it was not known that he was deaf and so while he was trying to climb I think he was climbing a very high altitude or a tree or something while he was climbing those under kept beckoning on him listen please please come down you will die and he thought they were cheering him and he was smiling at them and kept moving up and they were saying come down somewhere even crying because they didn't know he was deaf so he thought that they were cheering him and when he climbed and arrived there that was when they discovered that the man was deaf because he could not hear them he had to make do with his interpretation of what they were doing so he called what their their mockery he called it commendation and it sponsored him until he finished strong The Lord is calling me to ministry from where which village have you had did you see what your father become and you shrink back in mediocrity oh from this little hamlet the Lord will take you and the sounds of worship from you will get to the ends of the earth and here they come unaccredited counselors they come with all kinds of counsels of Ahitophel you must trust God for grace to connect yourself with the right people. It has to be intentional. Please listen to me. Some of you are in politics. Some of you are in government. Some of you are in business. And I tell you this, you are the average, both in thought and in results, of the people you surround yourself with. Are we blessed? Quickly, let me touch on the last area and then we pray. When the Lord showed me the work that he's now doing, when the Lord showed me the possibilities that would be working in as a ministry, it was, it was something that was big based on my background that would take the truth of God's power and grace literally across the nations of the earth. I studied my Bible and I looked through history and I saw great men and women. And right from that small room, I said, Lord, I believe you. Let's go. Now, let me tell you, it's, it's, it's not unusual for people to not believe you. So don't, don't think it's new. Of course, they will not believe you until they see the workings of the grace of God on your life. I don't know why I'm saying this, but I'm saying this to someone. Right now, because you are still evolving, it does not yet appear. You told people that you're going to fund the gospel. You will fund the gospel like a government. But now people are laughing at you because you're in one room. 
find courage history always repeats itself that God can lift you as a trophy Mary said be it unto me according to your word be it unto me how do we pull down strongholds listen very carefully number one the first key to deconstructing and dismantling wrong inferior beliefs that keep us in poverty that keep us in failure that keep us in mediocrity the first key write this down please is to recognize and to admit the need for renewal you must recognize and you must admit listen to me knowing that you need help is almost half the problem solved the fact that you are aware the prodigal son came to himself the Bible says and here's what he said how many hired servants does my father have and I'm here feeding with the swine he came to himself he was not advised the Bible says he said to himself I will arise and I will go to my father and I'll say father I have sinned against you and against heaven and I am not worthy to be taken as your son but take me as one of your servants and while he was coming afar off the father saw him and came and embraced him the responsibility of recognition that I recognize and I realize that I may not have any advantage from a territorial standpoint I recognize and I realize that I may be coming from a background that is largely anti-Christ anti-kingdom for instance that recognition that brokenness that contriteness of heart will always attract the spirit of grace and wisdom to you are we together it's true you need to admit that you need renewal that's why the Bible says that we should receive with meekness the engrafted word can I tell you this I submit to you people of God there is a lot of pride and a lot of arrogance in the body of Christ and across our sociological sphere is the reason why very few people rise pride over mediocrity pride over nothing I'm not being I'm not being sarcastic I apologize if it sounds so but I need to charge you and shake you up listen do not be ashamed and embarrassed when you discover that there is need for a higher dimension that meekness and humility is very powerful there were two thieves with Jesus are we together now and one of them kept ranting and talking nonsense even though he was about to die you see those kinds of people at the point of death he was a thief he was aware that he was a thief he was aware of what he stole and he didn't sound contrite at all mocking Jesus and the other one said mr. man shut up we stole we are aware of what we did this man is innocent and Jesus heard him there is there is something about the voice of brokenness there is something about the voice of genuine meekness no matter how wrong you are no matter how confused you are the moment you are broken and you are contrite you are attracting the attention of his majesty he said this day you will be with me in paradise you need to admit the need I had a conversation not too long ago with one of our fathers in this nation and um, when we spoke we spoke for a few hours and when he began to open me up to dimensions in ministry saying so many things sharing from years of experience I sat there feeling like a toddler I sat there feeling like someone who was just getting out of kindergarten and I said bless God for this encounter this is the kind of exposure that I need be careful be sure that you are not your best reference it is dangerous you must find a way of finding yourself in an atmosphere that stretches you pats your back very briefly and yet tells you that there are higher heights 
Though we are few, we're surrounded by men who have crossed that river before. And this is the song we'll be singing forever. Listen, this is very powerful. Stretch yourself. You've done so much, wonderful. But then God immerses you in an environment that stretches you. I remember the first day I watched Benny Hinn, I said, my God, what is this? I remember when I watched some of the generals, even though God was already doing great things in and through my life, I said, what is this? I had the opportunity to meet a few of them before they went to be with the Lord. Some of the, you know, those who met them, not God's generals now. But it was, it was amazing what they did to my spirit. I continue to press this one thing I do, forgetting the things that are behind. They don't have to be wrong things. Beware of excessively patting yourself at the back. Do so and then quickly. Champions are always forward thinking. Nobody claps for you for the same thing twice. When they clap for you once, that's it. If you have nothing new, there will be no applause again. Are we blessed? So you must recognize and admit the need for renewal. Number two. There are times that you may need to cast the demons and the spirits that keep the faulty mindset. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 4. You must cast their, their, their real spirits that can build. The Bible says, in whom the God of this world, please look up, hath blinded their minds. It was not a philosophy that blinded their minds. There is a real spirit that blinds the minds of people. Let me tell you this. Did you know that just because you are looking, it doesn't mean you are seeing? Yeah. The Bible says that when those men who wanted to sodomize um, Lot, remember now? Lot gave his daughters and they said, no, 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 we want Lot. The Bible says that the angels caused blindness to come on them and they wearied themselves in front of the door. They were right in front of the door, but they could not see. The miracle of open eyes. The Bible says the God of this world you can pass opportunities, you can pass relationships, but because there are spirits that blind the eyes of people, they will make you call good evil. You will call evil good. They will make you destroy the helpers of your destiny because you cannot see. He said, open down my eyes that I may behold. There are times you need to take authority in the name of Jesus and cast those spirit influences. Every good thing that comes into your life, something happens and until you fight it, you are not at rest. So your life is surrounded by the memory of good things and good people who keep passing through your life like ushers. You must sustain the grace to take authority over the spirits that cause these things. Bazanji Soroba Bazanji Kunya Number three, how do you pull down these strongholds? The renewal of the mind. What does that mean? Passionately pursuing to know God's perspective about life. Listen to me. There is an intention to renewal and transformation. You must passionately pursue God's perspective. We study the Bible because it contains the wisest perspective about life, about everything. You have to know God's perspective about life, about finances, about everything in life. It's called the renewal of the mind. Romans chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2. It says, do not be conformed. He says, I beseech thee, brethren, 
by the mercies of God that you offer your bodies a living sacrifice he says holy and acceptable unto God he calls it your reasonable act of service or worship verse 2 says do not be conformed to this world is the word aeon the thinking pattern that comes with the system he says but be ye transformed evolve into superior dimensions of yourself by the renewing of your mind you must trust god and refuse your current level lord i am tired of this level i'm tired of the limitations the mediocrity that the mediocrity that comes with this level the problem was never the oil it was the space that the vessels gave the oil the prophet diagnosed it accurately. He said, you call the oil small because it was a small vessel carrying the oil. The oil was hearing the conversation. He says, go and borrow vessel. You don't borrow oil, but you can borrow vessel. Buy the truth. Sell it not. He says, go and borrow. Borrow not a few. When he began to pour the oil to the vessels, the oil kept increasing. He said, go and sell it. Pay your debt and leave off the rest. Are we together now when you read job chapter 29 job was giving us the secret of his outstanding life and he began to give us a a, a breakdown of the many things that happened to him the first light that came upon job was on his mind not on his path there are two dimensions of light there is the one that shines upon your head there is the one that shines on your path the one that shines upon your head recalibrates reconstructs your understanding is called the mind of christ philippians chapter 2 and verse 10 it says permit this mind to be in you which was also in christ jesus there was a belief system that the son of the living god had that made the holy spirit comfortable living with him from age 12 while his contemporaries were running around he was with the scribes and the pharisees learning learning it was on the strength of his spiritual investment that he could withstand satan at the wilderness because he came to him it is written he came to him it is written he came to him it is written you must be full not just of scripture from a religious standpoint but it is important to know god's perspective please look up the kingdom has god's idea on everything God has his idea on kingdom wealth and prosperity. The world also has his idea. The world's ways that you can cheat, you can kill if need be. You can tell lies, you can be greedy, you can be involved in anything provided money comes. But the kingdom has its way. You must learn the ways of God. There is Jesus the way. The methodology of the kingdom. The authorized channel. He said, I am the door. A door means an authorized access point. Please listen carefully. And so, hitherto, when you were alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, you were not saved. You were not born again. You could do anything anyhow. But now you are in the kingdom. And you begin to study the ways of God. Then you learn that there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth the ways of God. There is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty. You learn that God can load men with daily benefits, not just monthly benefits. Are we together now? Yes. You learn that the proof of his fatherhood is his benevolence. That if you being evil, know how to give good gifts. So the, the awareness of the fatherhood of God gives you the confidence to approach him. You must learn the ways of God. In the kingdom, there is how God restores. In the world, there's no restoration. If it's gone, it's gone. Ah, but hallelujah, in the kingdom, there is a way. And I will restore even time, the years. God doesn't just restore things. God restores time. So when Jesus died, while they were talking about the dead Jesus, within 72 hours, he was back to life. This is a blessed hope for us. That means that all of the things you would have achieved 
that your knowledge or your insufficient knowledge did not allow you to achieve that the hand of God is able to go back into your yesterday and take everything there and bring it forward to your tomorrow this is scripture but you must learn the ways of God your confidence in this kingdom is when you sustain a superior belief that is culture not just based on Scientology or the philosophies of men you are transformed to the degree that you have the mind of Christ in experience are we together it is true that we live in a dark world that is full of evil it is true that there are arrows that fly by day but then you are convinced you are convinced that the jealousy of God has such his investment upon you the Bible says where your treasure is that is where your heart will be and if you are truly his treasure that means his heart and his jealousy has been invested towards you this gives you confidence hmm. that when men say there is a casting down for me i can say there is a lifting up it's not just some christian jargon this is truth based on the mind of god ah, that the wisdom of god is at work in me it is true this is the mind of christ you have to believe it do not think this is childish you ignore this it will be to your peril deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1 the mindset of the kingdom and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day it says the Lord will set you on high this is my destiny in Christ I sustain that mindset from whatever background and regardless any situation that he will set me on high above nations not above contemporaries above nations verse 2 it says and all these blessings shall come upon me and even overtake me this i believe this i believe ah. exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 i'm showing you pieces of scripture that reflects the mind of christ and i will give joshua selman favor in the sight of anybody including enemies of egyptians and the proof is that when you go you will not go empty i believe it the bible says strangers shall feed your flock this is god's mindset listen you have to choose what to believe this is not just some pentecostal thing no believe me this is how the kingdom was framed it says through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of god many people keep arguing this and they are failing they are broke they are mediocre they are going down they are sick nothing is happening in their lives superior belief systems cultured by the word of god when I get up in the morning, I say, this is the day the Lord has made. My emphasis is the Lord has made. Who made the day matters to me. Because I need to know if my interest was represented in that day. And if it is the Lord that made that day, I am secured. Because I know what the Lord can make. He is the maker of the heavens and the earth. So if he made a day, a thousand shall fall by my right, he said. 10,000 by my right side but he says I need not fear why I will only stand and watch and see the reward of the wicked my Bible tells me that the fullness of my days I will fulfill this is what I believe you can't imagine I was saying it humorously somewhere you can't imagine the number of text messages I get quite honestly apostle be careful I just had a vision and I saw your name in a shrine and I know they are not lying it will be foolish to think at this level the devil will be clapping to no but did the bible not say behold i give you authority over snakes and scorpions he said and over all the powers of the enemy and then he said nothing here's the keyword shall by any means there are many means many means but he says shall by any means your realities are framed by what you choose to believe are we together now yes sir 
so you must make up your mind it is not about i am a yoruba person it is not about i am an Igbo person it's not about i am a hausa person i'm a northern man. i'm an american a european asian no no the bible says we have been called out of every tribe every tongue every kindred immersed in the kingdom baptized into christ through his spirit and you must sustain that superior belief system listen to me there are many of you respectfully speaking and please don't feel insulted you have been in this city for many years and the city does not know you why because it, there is a belief system that makes dominion work you have to know what you believe you have to choose what you believe i made a covenant with god and this i believe i found out from scripture that jesus never met anyone twice for the person to be blessed and i made a covenant with god i said lord you are sending me to minister to people may i never have to meet someone twice for his life to change yes sir because you will meet people who are at a point of life and death there's no time for playing games and dilly dally. The messianic prophecy, Isaiah 61, the Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, upon me, upon me, upon me. It's a revelation. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. It's not trouble that is upon me. God told me what is upon me. Whatever he did not say, there are yokes that can come on people. But he told me what is, that if I ever feel heavy, what is upon me is the spirit of the Lord. This is my thinking. So there's no room for depression to say this is a, uh, 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 uh. The Bible tells me, if you ever feel anything upon you, it is the spirit of the Lord. And then he says help them please he says he hath anointed me i truly believe i am anointed find a way of believing this this is not a pastor's thing this is not a minister's thing let me tell you what it means to be anointed it comes from the word to be smeared with oil but that simply means authorized anointing is a system of authorization it legitimizes your operation mm. so that you can minister the power of god these are ordinary hands yes my family members are here my sisters are here biological people but when i met him something happened to me and i believed it i believe that i'm not ordinary Look, I'm not bragging, forgive me. I am, I'm revealing something to you. When you hold that file, it's not five fingers that is holding that file. Uh-uh. Please find a way of believing what I'm telling you. Help them, please. For as long as you are the only one holding that file, a door will never open. For as long as you are the only one preaching, your, your words cannot carry that power. The ability of the spirit your words become like arrows sent into destinies dissecting impossible situations why because you are aware I read in my Bible Jesus said it and I believe and the Lord walking with them confirming the word with signs so I expect it that whilst I am teaching, whilst the word of God is coming, there is an unction, Kali's Kebarata, an unction healing, an unction delivering, an unction opening doors. This I believe. This is the supernatural power of a transformed mind. Your mind can give the Holy Ghost space. When the man of God was leading us in worship here, one of the things I was praying for is, Lord, help your people understand what you have done to us. Help us understand that we are not ordinary. This is not a Pentecostal thing. These hands are not ordinary hands. Hear me, doctors. Hear me, medical people. That is not only an injection. An injection should not have more power than your hand. Believe me when I tell you this. Exalted. 
reigning and ruling with him in power. We have been commanded to bless and I believe. You hear people come and testify here. Let me tell you this. I've told you that prophecy does not only reveal. It's not only when I call names of people and numbers. No. That if it is true you are anointed, then the opening of your mouth is like the opening of the gate of men's destiny. Because you will release something from the throne through your mouth to the destinies of men. And let me use the opportunity and declare over someone in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I speak over your life and all that concerns you step into new dimensions of the spirit new wine upon your destiny new dimensions of spiritual illumination in the name of Jesus Christ hear me let me speak over your life that any man who fights you goes down instantly. Please sit down. We're about to pray shortly. Pali sele mahaskiada. Shabranda kata bakarata sedegete beleketa. Shkabara kato sadi nahaskaba. Shalakata Branda Sadakata, Parada Sadahasia, Brente Kepare Sadi Sali Sali Salita, Kabarate Kebarado Zesia Ata Baratai, Lekate Brendi Kesia da la Catusiata, Pretis Keberindo Shilakatia. Enter the new, says the Spirit of God. Enter the new, I'm bringing you into the new. Shalinda Seneca Paharanda Shadia, Praga de Skilimana Catusia. Enter the new Manteles Kebarita Tosiata. Enter the new Stay at the Spirit of the Lord. Listen to me. Please hear me. If you are in ministry here in the name of Jesus from tonight, step into a supernatural dimension of ministry. No more preaching and sharing the grace with people sleeping as though you is not God that is talking to you. What kind of a ministry is that? The next time you go to lead that prayer, the next time you go to lead that fellowship, I'm speaking by the Spirit, the next time you go to your prayer group, the next time you lead the, the, the fellowship at your workplace, I release an unction upon you. I release an anointing upon you. You will speak with fire. You will see signs following. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Spirit of God. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. Hear me, business people. Listen to me. It takes more than buying and selling to prosper. There is truly a grace that can help men. There is a grace that can give men visibility in this kingdom. It's called the hear ye him anointing. The anointing that compels systems and structures to acknowledge the workings of the spirit on your life. I don't care how limited your business has been in the name of Jesus from tomorrow I stand by the grace of God I place an unction upon what you do and in the name of Jesus let it prosper by the Spirit of the Living God defying the laws of failure I release you to prosper hallelujah Listen, we're talking about mindsets and strongholds. Please listen to me. It's not enough to just receive Jesus into your heart. You have to journey with the Holy Ghost and through scripture to begin the work of transformation. It's one of the hardest, if I would use that expression, 
assignment of the Holy Ghost in the life of a believer because most believers are not malleable enough. Every time I'm before him, I tell him, Lord, I'm, I'm before you. I'm aware of my limitations. I'm aware of my limitations. I ask that there be an exchange, a supply of strength and power. There are so many sick people depending on my life. There are so many confused people. Grant grace from heaven. Solomon Lange called him my helper. Let him come now. Let him come now. Listen to what you are saying. Let him come now. Let him come now. But Zanji Soro. Let him come now. Let him come now. But Zanji Konya. Let him come now. Listen to me. For some of you, you may not know what has come upon your life. It's until you step out of this place tonight. All of a sudden, you will watch doors open. Supernatural doors open. You will open your Bible and a strange dimension of illumination, revelation knowledge coming upon you. Hear me. Everything he said here is true. You can believe it. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the works that I do, you shall also do. He says, greater works. I believe him. I sincerely believe, I sincerely believe that I can never be disadvantaged. Honestly, honestly, I believe it. When the Lord sent me to this city, the Holy Spirit instructed me to get the map of Abuja. And when I dropped the map on my table, I said, this city is so small. It's not pride. All of a sudden, I saw just six local governments. We are well able. Joshua and Caleb. The remaining came back with all kinds of reports. The Bible calls it evil reports. You have said many things about yourself God did not tell you. You have received many things that were not given by God. It's time to change it tonight. It's time to refuse. It's time, even if you are the first person who does it from your family, there is grace for you. Is someone ready to pray tonight? Lift your voice and begin to pray all across this building. Pray in the spirit for one minute. Go ahead and pray. Koinonia, pray. All the overflows, pray. Outside, pray. Pray. Someone pray over your life.
Listen to me. Listen to me. The next prayer point. You are going to confront head on every challenge that has stood before you and mock the God of the Bible. I release my faith with you in this corporate atmosphere. Call it by name and command it by the Spirit. Get out of the way. It's time to advance. It's time to make progress. Someone pray. Someone pray. Financial mountains. Someone pray. Mountains of spiritual laxity, mountains of prayerlessness, mountains of wordlessness. to make very powerful declarations don't be afraid the bible says let the redeemed of the lord say so let the healed of the lord say so let the lifted of the lord say so let the anointed of the lord say so and whatsoever adam called it that was the name thereof are you ready to speak over your destiny and over your family lift your voice and begin to speak i prophesied as i was commanded i decree and declare the lord is my light and salvation are you declaring by the spirit of god my path is as a shining light shining ever brighter please don't be quiet don't be silent i decree and declare by the spirit of god prophesy your global disability prophesy your increase Prophesy your prosperity, declare by the spirit of grace. I rise by the spirit of God. Greater levels of prayer, greater levels of passion, greater levels of fire, greater levels of love, appetite for spiritual things. In the name of Jesus, going from glory to glory, grace to grace. Grace multiply, wisdom multiply, power multiply. Hallelujah. 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 Two more prayer points that were done. Let me tell you this. We are about to pray. You are going to call back everything that left you and yet is not in God's divine purpose to leave you. 
the bible says where fell it alas master for it was borrowed and he drew a stick and the axe head came back help them please listen to me the holy spirit is ministering to me you have to sustain a superior mindset that everything that lives your life is still in the earth and there is a technology to call it back to your life relationships opportunities are you ready to pray lift your voice in the name of jesus help them please help them please and i will restore to you the years that the tanker walk the palmer walk has eaten command restoration over your destiny command restoration over your life command restoration over your prayer life a greater dimension of prayer fire a greater dimension of god's fire a greater dimension of spiritual diligence nothing missing nothing broken i have a covenant of peace of Jesus in the name of Jesus listen to me we're about to round up listen to me I'm a student in the school of the spirit and I have learned and I have come to respect the power of the anointing It is truly what is on you that controls what is around you. It is true. And for every time you come to this ground, there has to be something that will rest upon your life. It says, My horn has thou exalted like the horn of a unicorn, and I am anointed. Salah Sele Marahaskia. I am anointed, I am anointed, I am authorized, authorized to do business, authorized to do ministry, authorized to advance. The power of the Holy Ghost is a reality that we must embrace. It says, for with God, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly far above all that we ask or think according to the power is the word energies that works in us there is an energizing of the spirit hallelujah listen i'm about to speak over your life there are words that are empty there are words that are informative but there are words that are traced they carry deep mysteries on them Hallelujah. Madam, what is your name? This woman on black. Huh? 
What's your name? Come. Who is Choma? What's your what's her name? Huh? Who is Choma? Your Choma. Madam, please just give me five minutes. Look at me. Where are you coming from? You're here in Abuja. I want to pray for you. Your life is fully about to change. You believe in Jesus. Did you come alone? I came with my sister. Where is she? Because it's two of you. God is visiting the entire family. Where is the person? Lord, you took my pain away. And then you gave me joy. You're my peace, my melody. In the center of the storm. You gave me a breath. To sing to you, that's why I will be done. Hallelujah. Ijioma, this is what I'm hearing. Who is that? Ijioma, what's your name? What's your name? Ijioma. You've taken the pain and the sorrow. You've given me there is a grace for favor, madam, that is coming on you. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. Jesus! Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus, may that grace take you to realms, superior realms in the spirit. In the name of Jesus, hold your hands together. Truly speaking, let me tell you, I give you now and the next one month, the way God is going to shift all of you, I stretch my hands, take that grace. Right now in the name of Jesus, you step into superior dimensions of favor. This is by the power of the Holy Ghost. Please don't come out at random, our time is gone. Our time is gone. We are yet, we are yet to have our first miracle service in Abuja. And I... I I'm not sure we may do it this month, but by the grace of God, we would have, by His grace, soon, our first miracle service here, where we we'll allow the Lord to move in ways and stamp down darkness once and for all. <laughs> Hallelujah. The power of God is going to come on one of you. This four ladies looking at me. I'm seeing oil being poured upon you new dimension in the spirit this is what the holy ghost is telling me in the name of jesus i bless every one of you and i pray for you even by the power of the holy spirit you will never return the same in the name of jesus christ you will never return the same in the name of jesus christ let me talk to one more person james who is james i'm hearing the word james who is james you are wearing like a green nose mask or something like that. James, who is that? What's your name? What's your name? What do you do, sir? I'm a pastor. You're a pastor? Yes. Where? In Kubwa. In Abuja here. Yes. Your own ministry? Yes. Can I pray for you? Yes, sir. name of Jesus who is the Christ of God I stretch my hands there is there, there is still a need for many 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 servants of God doing great things and I tell you the days of superstar Christianity in terms of exclusivity and fighting other people those days are over we're united first in the name of Jesus regardless our differences doctrinally etc we are one big army advancing the kingdom can i have a believing amen? amen i pray for you sir may the lord empower you you return back to your assembly a sign and a wonder in the name of jesus the christ amen. of god i decree and declare fresh grace amen. fresh power upon you amen. in the name of jesus amen. my brother in the name of jesus i pray for you in jesus name that which has never been done even in your family may my god use you to do amen in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Sir. Now, I don't... 
I don't do politics in church. I don't. I try as much as possible to not do. I love Nancy in a lot of trouble. But sir, I will talk to you. But I'm seeing you climb a ladder in politics. There is a strange. The, this is this is even just the beginning. This is what God is doing. That that's something we'll discuss on a personal basis. But I'm telling you that do not plateau. You are just about to rise. There is a great destiny for you, even politically. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please bring me someone who shouts now loud under the anointing. The hearing of everyone. Let me just talk to that person and we're done. So here, you are from Christ Embassy. Who is that? I want to pray for you. I'm seeing that you're a pastor. You're from Christ Embassy. Sir, look at me. I want to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. What do you do, sir? I, I'm a lawyer and also a pastor. You're a lawyer and a pastor. Yes, sir. Don't feel bad. I'm looking at you and I'm seeing a man on chains from head to toe. This is what I'm saying. A lawyer and a pastor. But in the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God, I declare, I stretch my hands. Let it come to an end now. Everything that represents captivity, I release grace upon you, sir. Amen. You will go back and you will do exploits in career and in ministry. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. If, is, there, is there a pastor like that? Is there someone like that? You're a pastor? I'm not seeing a pastor, but I'll pray for you anyway. But you're, you're a pastor? Okay. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you will carry superior dimensions of the giftings and the grace of God. Where is that pastor? You are, you are a worker here. Where is your, you, you are here alone? Where is your wife? Wife, come quickly, please. There is an oil, there is a grace that is coming upon you. God is not done with you, both of you. I stretch my hands by the Spirit of God and I pray for you both. This is what the Lord is revealing to me. There is a dimension of the healing ministry that God wants to bring you into. Receive that grace. Take that anointing. Both of you will walk in superior dimensions of the healing grace. I release that anointing from today. Step into it. It's an impartation by the spirit of grace. In the name of Jesus Christ. Experience the hand of God. In the name of Jesus. Every other person who is in ministry here. Step into supernatural dimensions of results. In the name of Jesus Christ. Supernatural dimensions of results. Very quickly. Very quickly. The greatest encounter that you can have, listen carefully, is an encounter. Shortly. More than miracles, more than... Most thing, I am the way, he said. Yeah. In the main auditorium, and all the overflows down, and the overflow outside, and those watching, you are here, and you're saying, Apostle, hearing you teach, hearing you talk, hearing and seeing the one. Some of you, you are saying that, well, I, I give. Now, aside from those here and those at the gallery, every other overflow, inside and outside, I will request that you move to your projector screens. And then those inside here, you belong to any of those categories, please make your way gallantly as we clap for them. God bless you. God bless you. Don't wait for someone to be the first to come. Be the first. Take that bold step and come. In the name of Jesus, let's appreciate them. There are people here. There has to be someone who God is calling because he adds daily as many as should be saved. If there's someone there, please appreciate them as they come. God bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Celebrate them as they come to Jesus. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. 
check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.